Helen Miller looked at the information. Nick Francis was now in charge at Sequoia Turner. Sequoia Turner was a large architecture firm Sequoia recently set up in New York, and it was registered half a year ago. Their main concern was sustainable architectural design, and since the company was in the initial stages of formation, the number of employees wasn't high. The properties owned by Nick included an independent villa in Manhattan. Other than that, there was no information on him, but the most vital information regarding his background was unsearchable. Seeing such a result, Helen felt it was in line with Xavier Wood's current behavior. It seemed that he was using the name of Nick Francis to start his operations here. That would make things much easier. The only thing that surprised her was Xavier actually had the money to buy an independent villa in Manhattan. Furthermore, it was all paid up front. It seemed that he had been doing quite well these past few years. Xavier Woods, we really underestimated you. Helen sighed. She had heard her son speak about the Sequoia Corporation before. It only appeared three years ago, but it grew rapidly and established branches in several countries at breakneck speed. It could be seen that their CEO was very capable. If possible, she wished that her son could establish contact with him and be known in powerful circles. Unfortunately, the CEO of Sequoia had always been a mystery, and no one knew his real identity. At this moment, Richard Hill called. We'll do as you say. Very good. Helen knew that Richard was a loyal and obedient man. Richard's voice sounded tired. Helen continued. Tomorrow I will have Andrew host the new board of directors. All right, Richard agreed. However, Damon shouldn't show himself in the near future, so you should let Ophelia rest at home. Helen thought a bit, then added, Wait a while, then let them go to the company offices once the news gets out. All right. Helen nodded in satisfaction. Suddenly, a question popped up in her head. She asked, I heard Ophelia bought her own shares in the company. Richard Hill started to cough, as if something was stuck in his throat. Helen continued, Mr. Hill, are you all right? <clears throat> I'm fine. Richard cleared his throat. Then I'll see you at the board meeting tomorrow. Helen left. Neither of them had thought at the time that such an extraordinary thing would happen at the meeting tomorrow. Xavier raised an eyebrow when he received the message. They have a board meeting tomorrow? He asked. The computer screen in front of him showed John's face. At this moment, he and Xavier were on a video conference call. Yes, sir. John nodded. Sir, how should we deal with this? Xavier's slender and pretty fingers lightly tapped the table as if he was playing at a piano recital. You attend the meeting tomorrow, Xavier Woods ordered. Yes, sir, John confirmed. We'll keep talking then. I want to hear their arrangements. With that, Xavier ended the call. He had just heard Ophelia's footsteps. Sure enough, after a short while, Ophelia carefully stuck out her head from the door of the study and said, Xavier, you can eat now. All right, I'll be right down, Xavier responded. Upon hearing the reply, Ophelia quickly retracted her head. Xavier lowered his head and smiled to himself. He gently shook his head, as if disbelieving his good fortune. He was in a very good mood. After Xavier left, Aiden Burns moved quickly. His heart was racing. He pressed his hand to his chest. The boss's smile hit him in an unexpected way. He couldn't be attracted to a man. He liked women. His latest employer was too weird. He felt that the harsh, cold, and direct employer he had before Xavier had made him feel more comfortable. Zon, would you think me gay? Thinking about this, Aiden couldn't help but shiver. He kept saying to himself, I like women. I like women. I like women. I like women. He kept uttering it to himself, as if he was chanting a prayer. The moment that Xavier Woods calmed down, his smile appeared again. Aiden thought to himself, I'm gonna die. A new day had begun. Ophelia went to her office on the south side of the city, as usual. Xavier arrived at the office and saw Aiden, who was standing by the door, and looked exhausted. Didn't sleep well last night? Xavier asked. Somewhat, Aiden nodded. He dared to say that Xavier was the one who had kept him sleepless. Xavier glanced at his bodyguard, and his tone became stern. Stay alert. If we make a mistake, you know what the consequences are. Yes, sir. Aiden nodded enthusiastically for a second. Xavier saw his reaction. Get me John. Yes, sir. Aiden immediately sat down and started working on the call. A Bentley stopped in front of Hillcrest's entrance. 
Andrew helped Helen out of the car. Mom, slow down. We're here, Helen said. She raised her head and looked at the Hillcrest building in front of her with a smile on her face. She never expected that one day she would enter this place. Let's go. Andrew supported Helen as they walked through the entrance gate. When they arrived at the meeting room, they saw that Richard Hill and the other shareholders had already arrived. The other minority shareholders had sold their shares a long time ago, so not many people were present. Almost everyone who was there had already done private deals with Andrew Hoffman. The reason they came today was play act for Richard, but their shares had already been sold to Andrew. He nodded at the crowd. Mr. Hill, can we start now? Richard nodded. He should have arrived by now. Andrew walked to the former chairman's seat that had belonged to Richard Hill, sat down, and smiled. Then let's begin. Richard saw Andrew sitting in his seat and felt uncomfortable. Mr. Hoffman, this is my seat. Richard raised a small objection. Andrew pretended to be shocked when he heard that. Is that so? I didn't even notice. Usually this is the seat that I sit in when I hold important meetings regarding the Hoffmans. I'm so sorry. With that, Andrew Hoffman made a gesture to get up. But in the end, one of the shareholders said, Since Mr. Hoffman has taken the seat, there is no need to get up again. In any case, Hillcrest will be guided by him in the future. Richard looked at the others. They were all people who would move according to the wind. Now, they'd already learned how to lick Andrew Hoffman's boots. Seeing this, Helen was satisfied and sat down. When Richard beheld this scene, he couldn't help but lower his head in shame. He also found a place to sit down. One day, he would take back everything that belonged to him, he vowed to himself. Andrew sat upright. All right, the meeting starts now. Today, our main topic is to talk about Hillcrest restructuring and future developments. Richard took out the documents he had prepared. He already prepared the relevant work last night. When he was speaking, Andrew also took out the information he had prepared and interrupted Richard. I have a new work schedule for you all. I hope that everyone can take a look. He quickly added, I'm new here and not familiar with the business. If I'm not doing the right thing, I hope you can bring it up without any hesitation. Then, Andrew got his assistant to send a copy of the documents to everyone present. Richard saw Andrew's drastic changes and tugged on the paper. What the hell was Andrew doing? Richard was caught completely unaware by it. He, he was about to speak. There was commotion from outside the door. Not long after, the door to the meeting room was open. A few men in neat suits walked in. Richard Hill immediately stood up. Who are you people? What do you mean by barge in like this? Richard asked loudly. If you don't leave, I'll have the security escort you out. John smiled. Excuse me, is this the start of the board meeting? Yes, one of the board members responded. After receiving this reply, John went to the side and took a seat. No one could understand what it meant. Who was this man? Not only did he interrupt the meeting, he sat down casually. It really made one wonder. Who is this person? Andrew Hoffman frowned. This person was clearly here to ruin the meeting or to spy on it. He directly asked, May I ask who you are? We're in a meeting right now, so I'll have to request you to leave. Sean smiled and gestured to the assistant behind him to speak. The assistant nodded. This is John Brown. Today he is participating in this meeting as a shareholder of Hillcrest. After hearing this, Richard, Andrew, and Helen all looked towards John almost at the same time. This person had bought Ophelia shares. Andrew asked again, Shareholders? Your name isn't on the list of shareholders of Hillcrest, I'm certain about that. Mr. John is here today to represent Miss Hill, the assistant answered. Hearing this, everyone was stunned. Richard looked at John and asked, Ophelia sold her shares to you? John nodded in agreement. And how do we believe you? Andrew couldn't let any problems occur. This was his moment. John's assistant took out a document and handed it to Andrew. This is the authorization letter signed by Miss Ophelia herself. Please look at it. Seeing that it had an official seal on it, Andrew sat down and looked at it seriously. The authorization was very clear. Ophelia had sold her 40% stake in Hillcrest to John Brown and had given him full authority to represent her in meetings and conferences. Furthermore, each power of attorney also had the seal of the lawyer firm's notary, proving its validity. 
Andrew looked at John with displeasure. Ophelia Hill had already been expelled before this. She has no right to participate in any business with Hillcrest, so this authorization is invalid. John snapped his fingers, and another man in a suit came forward and handed a document to Andrew and Richard. This is the will of Miss Lawrence, who was a client at our law firm before she died. The will clearly states that Miss Hill was the only legal successor to Hillcrest Real Estate. The company cannot expel her for any reason. The 40% share in Miss Hill's possession was also the legal property that Miss Lawrence had left to Miss Hill. No one else had the right to interfere and divide it up. Unless you are willing, you are not to make any moves. The men in the suit had explained it well. Richard's hands were trembling as he looked at the will. He didn't expect Margaret to possess such a trump card in her hands, even in death. Mr. Hill, this will also have your signature, so you should know about this matter and know about the legality of the will. The man who had given him the document finished. Andrew turned to the last page and saw the joint signatures of Margaret and Richard. Helen frowned and looked coldly at Richard. She thought all the calculations and probabilities had been taken care of, but in the end, she had still failed by a huge margin. So this was the reason why Margaret didn't rebel against Ruth Walters back then. It's because this was the last thing she could do for Ophelia. When John saw that everyone's expression had changed, he smiled. If there's no problem, can we continue the meeting? Andrew stared at John. He knew that this new shareholder wasn't a simple person. If anything, John seemed dangerous. Mr. Hoffman, it seems that you're not satisfied by my appearance. John spoke politely. He continued. However, I would like to make a request here. Please remember to inform me of the next meeting. A large company like the Hoffman Group really shouldn't be sneaking around and making things uncomfortable for their shareholders, should they? Andrew was seething with anger and was about to lose control when Helen stopped him. She looked at John and said, Mr. Brown, we didn't know about this until today. John nodded. I assume that you were aware of it. Didn't the Hoffman Group pride itself on its promptness and alertness to things happening within its businesses? It reflects rather poorly on you to not know of my existence or my investment. John was about to add more when Xavier's voice came through the earpiece. John, don't cause any unnecessary trouble. John pursed his lips. All right. He didn't dare disobey Mr. Wood's orders. Will the meeting continue? My time is precious. Helen gestured for Andrew to sit down and continue the meeting. John regarded the schedule and changes that Andrew had introduced to Hillcrest. He did not betray any emotion. After looking through the documents, he handed them to his assistant. Helen observed John the whole time. Why did Ophelia transfer her share to this person? He didn't look very reliable either. It boggled Helen's mind. Ophelia couldn't know such a person. Or was this person from Xavier Wood's side? No. Helen must investigate this mystery investor. In the meeting, John listened with his face seemingly attentive and did not say a word. Rather than saying he was listening, it was more like Xavier was the one listening. John had only come to rain on Andrew's parade today, and the meeting itself was very boring. Anything else? Andrew Hoffman seemed to be looking directly at John Brown. John sat up straight and waited for Xavier's instructions. Shared evidence. Xavier's voice was heard by John. John opened his mouth. I have no objection in general, but as a shareholder, I have only one request. Now that I own 40% of the shares, the company is in the green, and I would like my share of the dividends. Hearing that, Andrew's eyes widened. He could not believe that this new investor dared to mention this. Now that John Brown owned shares in Hillcrest, the money it earned should technically also be his. It was as if this man had become a celebrity in one fell swoop. How much is a 40% bonus? Andrew grasped as his mind tried to calculate the number. He could only say, What? John looked at Andrew. Mr. Hoffman, the law has a provision that shareholders of a corporation get a share of the profits and can take it out at their discretion. Then John stood up. If there's nothing you wish to say to me, I'll take my leave. After a few steps, he stopped. Oh, yes, I forgot to mention. My lawyers were recording the entire meeting. I hope Mr. Hoffman will forgive me for not taking his prior permission. John walked out with his retinue. Andrew clenched his fist. This new investor was really hard to deal with. Andrew couldn't afford to make any mistakes. This was a game of chess, and Andrew still had the pieces. But he had to watch out for John Brown. Ophelia's move was powerful. 
But it was Andrew's turn now. After John left, Andrew sat down again. The remaining board members carefully looked at him. They didn't dare to leave without his permission. Helen glanced at the rest of the table and ordered, Everybody please leave. Finally, only Richard, Andrew, and Helen were left in the meeting room. Richard Hill saw that Andrew's mood had soured, so he quickly tried to endear himself to the new ownership by showing surprise and anger. What in the world is Ophelia trying to achieve by doing such a thing? Helen glanced at Richard coldly. If you had not tried forcing her to hand over the shares, she would not have taken such a drastic step. Mrs. Hoffman, it seems like you're intent on blaming me for this, Richard replied. He had no real power or decision-making power anymore. He was the chairman only in name, and didn't possess any token authority either. Helen retracted her gaze from Richard. We all know that this John Brown is not an easy target. Maybe he was specially sent by that person. Richard was confused at first, but then realizing what Helen was implying, he suddenly laughed. Do you mean the man that took Ophelia away that day? I don't think it's possible. That man had only one good piece of clothing, and he was just a pushover. Last time, he confessed to me that he had no money. Helen Miller couldn't help but roll her eyes when she saw Richard's confident face. How ignorant. Xavier Woods had no money. He probably had more than the Hoffmans right now. If he knew his identity, he would kneel before him and obey his orders. Helen didn't want to stay here any longer. She stood up. Andrew, I'm leaving. Okay, I'll get someone to send you back first. When Helen reached downstairs, she saw John Brown standing at the entrance door, looking like he was waiting for someone. Seeing her walk out, John took off his sunglasses and nodded at him. Helen ignored him and stood by the door, waiting for the driver to pick her up. John smirked. Although he didn't wish to deal with such a person, his boss had given the order and he could only brace himself and go ahead with Xavier's wishes. Mrs. Hoffman? John said. Helen was stunned that she was being addressed directly and not through an assistant. She trembled. Yes? Mr. Woods asked me to ask you if you've thought over what he said last time. John smiled as he spoke. Helen was shocked and stared with her eyes wide open. You really are Xavier Woods' man. No, we're just good friends, John said with a smile. With that, the car stopped in front of them and John got in without continuing the conversation. Helen stared at the car as it drove away. She seemed to have fallen into a trance. She couldn't understand what Xavier was trying to do. At the Riverside Villa, Xavier Woods put down his headphones. Sir, when do you plan on officially meeting the people from the Hoffman Group? Aiden asked. Xavier said calmly, No rush. Right now the urgency isn't on us, but them. Aiden Burns did not continue talking and handed over a document. This is the information you requested. Xavier took it and opened it to have a look. He frowned. What kind of life was Jane leading now? Where is she right now? He asked. At home, Aiden answered and continued. Jane's husband had previously argued for a divorce, and now he's dragging it on while he often makes messes and cheats on her. Jane has had no choice but to return to her hometown. Xavier pondered upon it for a while. Seeing she was Ophelia's best friend and had really taken care of her, he wanted to help Jane once. Xavier Wood shared the information he found with Ophelia. What is that? she asked. You take a look at it first. Xavier felt he should let her know about her friend. When Ophelia finished reading... Tears were in full flow, dropping onto the paper one by one. She had forgotten to pay attention to Jane because of her own issues. Xavier passed a tissue to Ophelia. So, what do you think about this? Xavier, can you help Jane? Ophelia opened her mouth. In the past, whenever I had problems, she would always help me. She was always there for me. Yeah, Xavier nodded. He went forward and hugged Ophelia. All right. We'll get her the help she needs. The next day was also the beginning of the weekend. Xavier took Ophelia to Jane's hometown. Before they even entered the door, they could hear Jane being yelled at by her family. What's the use of crying every day? One of them asked. You're saying that you, a woman whose husband and in-laws have abandoned her, has the nurse come back here? It's shameful. Exploit our reputation with this. It's the world now. Another voice could be heard yelling. What else can you do when you're a divorced woman? Jane's mother said. 
Ophelia tightened her grip. Many of the older generation in small towns like James had not moved ahead with time. They even thought that if someone was to divorce, it would be a huge crime. Their lives would be ruined. This kind of conservative thinking still existed in some parts of the country. Xavier saw Ophelia and knew these words were affecting her too. He put his arm around her shoulder. Knock on the door. Let's help Jane. Ophelia nodded. Every time he would quietly accompany her and take care of her, get her to calm down. What would she do if they split up in the future? Ophelia didn't allow herself to think too much about it. First, she had to solve Jane's problem. She knocked on the door. A moment later, Jane's mother opened the door. She saw two people standing at the entrance. She could tell they were from the city just by looking at their clothes. Who are you looking for? Jane's mother asked in a heavy, rustic accent. Ophelia nodded politely. Mrs. Stewart, I'm looking for Jane. Hearing that it was her daughter they were looking for, Jane's mother shouted loudly into the house for her. Xavier wasn't used to such a loud voice, so he frowned. Jane came to the door and was stunned when she saw Ophelia and Xavier. Why are all of you here? Jane didn't expect the two of them to come. Ophelia smiled. I came looking for you because there was something I had to do. Wait a moment. Turning around, Jane walked into her house and took out her bag. Seeing her come out, Ophelia went forward and held her hand. Is there a quiet place where we can talk? Jane glanced at Xavier and marveled at the appearance of such a tall and handsome man. Let's go to town, Jane said. Three of them got into the car and went to the best restaurant in town, which was a local burger chain. I'm sorry, this is the only place here. Jane was worried Xavier didn't look like the kind of person who frequented or even ate from such places. Xavier nodded and looked down at the menu. Ophelia, how did you know I was here? Jane asked. Ophelia didn't want Jane to feel as if she was being pitied. Xavier and I were traveling for the weekend. I heard that you had gone back home, so we just dropped by as it was on the way. Jane let out a bitter laugh when she heard this. You guys probably heard about what happened between Harris and he, right? Jane. Ophelia didn't know how to comfort her best friend. All of a sudden, the atmosphere at the table changed. Jane lowered her head. She didn't want her best friend to see her like this. We have no ill intentions. Ophelia and I came here today to help you. Xavier was the first to break the silence. Jane looked up. Help me? Ophelia held her hand. Yes, Jane, just let us help you. No need. You have enough things to do and occupy yourself with. Jane didn't want Ophelia to get involved with the Joneses. She had also seen the news recently. Ophelia understood what she meant. Jane, my problems have been resolved. In the past, when I had problems or issues I had to fight out, you were always there for me and helped me. This time, Jane, let me help you. Jane looked at Ophelia with even more gratitude. Her words were like a soothing balm, repairing and comforting her much-injured pride and hurt heart. Okay. Jane nodded. Seeing Jane's approval, Ophelia finally felt at ease. She had been worried that Jane, being the proud person she was, would not accept her offer of help. I understand the situation between you and Harris, Ophelia continued. Jane made fun of herself. I really don't understand what he's doing. I was so stupid that I don't think I ever understood him. Ophelia glanced at Xavier, wanting him to speak and share what he could. Xavier saw his wife's anxious expression and took a sip from his teacup. Then he said slowly, Miss Stewart, I can find you a lawyer to settle the divorce, but I have one condition. Jane didn't expect Xavier to be willing to help her. When they first met, he always seemed extremely distant. She was very surprised. Seeing Xavier's gaze fall on Ophelia, Jane had finally understood why. Ophelia found a really good partner this time and she was genuinely happy for her best friend. Mr. Woods, what are your conditions? Jane asked. Xavier put down the cup in his hand. I heard that you studied architectural design. Yes, Jane nodded. Y yes! There's an interesting project that's landed my way, and I am very invested in it. And I just happen to lack a designer. Would you be interested? Xavier asked. Jane was stunned. Xavier Woods was obviously helping her. But not only did he offer to help her solve her divorce problem, but he was also offering to land her a job. 
Seeing that her friend was in a daze, Ophelia smiled and clapped her hands. Jane, what are you waiting for? Just... Yes! You've heard James of being a designer, right? Now there's finally an amazing opportunity in front of you. You can't just let it slip by. Jane looked at Xavier with eyes brimming with tears and said, Mr. Woods, thank you so much. Don't thank me just yet, Miss Stewart. My expectations are extremely high as well. Xavier smiled. I will work to the best of my ability, Mr. Woods, Jane replied. Very good, Xavier nodded. After they finished dinner, Ophelia said to Jane, Go home and pack up your things. We're leaving for New York in a couple of days. Jane shook her head. Not now, just give me a while. I have some things to sort out here. All right. Ophelia sounded slightly disappointed. Jane thanked Xavier again. Mr. Woods, thank you so much. I'll report back on time. Just be careful when you head back. The road can be rather uneven around the outskirts of town. Xavier nodded. Of course. And then added, Why don't we drop you off on the way back? Jane shook her head. No need. You guys can go ahead. Dropping me off will needlessly make you late. She let out a sigh of relief as she watched Xavier drive away. Seeing that Ophelia looked much happier and fulfilled now, Jane tried to keep her spirits up too. Yes, she would also have to formally get a divorce, but things were starting to look up. In the car, Ophelia still felt a little guilty. Xavier, we probably should have dropped Jane back off. It's kind of dark out. Xavier smiled. Can't you see she refused so that we can have a romantic drive? Ophelia blushed when she heard Xavier's words. Is... is so? He smiled helplessly. I certainly feel that you're really not that slow of a person. Ophelia was still red. I... say that. Seeing that Ophelia was resisting his charm, Xavier threw a question at her. You're just too much of a prude, aren't you? Ophelia did not want to continue this conversation with Xavier anymore, so she changed the subject. Xavier, uh, what kind of design have you asked for from Jane? He glanced at his wife. You really want to know? <laughs> Ophelia nodded. If this is classified information, I wouldn't have asked. I think the rules. Xavier smiled. My wife is really considerate. Ophelia's heart skipped a beat when she heard Xavier call her wife again. This time, she felt for the first time in her life the title suited her. Looking at the stunned Ophelia, Xavier couldn't help but smile. He really enjoyed spending time with her. He changed the topic. Ooh, bottlehead. Ophelia shuddered. Xavier didn't intend to tell Ophelia that he had planned to take the land on east of the city. Actually, he had unintentionally discovered the proposal on Ophelia's computer the other day. He couldn't help but admire her ability to come up with a plan with such a limited time. Therefore, he made the decision. He also knew that the Hoffman group wanted to take this land as well. Xavier definitely wouldn't give up such a good opportunity, and he also needed to use his wife's plan. The reason he asked Jane to design it was that they were good friends, which meant they would definitely understand each other and could work well together. This time, Xavier wanted to see the explosive strength of these two women. It was a chance for the two of them to prove their strength to the people who needed to be proved wrong. It was very late when they returned to the villa. Ophelia fell asleep while leaning against the front passenger seat. Xavier opened the car door and carried Ophelia indoors. She snapped out of her daze. Xavier? You're awake, her husband asked tenderly. Ophelia nodded. Are we home? Yes. Put me down. You've been driving all day. I'll be really tired. Ophelia was worried. He put her down and took her by the hand into the mansion. While Ophelia was showering, a figure gestured to Xavier from the outside. He walked to the balcony. What's wrong? Sir, Helen Hoffman came over this afternoon, Aiden said. Xavier smirked. Quite fast. When she saw no one at home, she left, Aiden continued. Xavier nodded. It was a coincidence they had avoided meeting each other today. She really wanted to talk to me about something, otherwise she wouldn't have come all the way here. Sir, now that she knows you live here, I'm worried she might reveal your identity to Miss Woods. Aiden looked concerned. Indeed, Xavier didn't want Ophelia to know his real identity at the moment. He didn't want her to bear too much of a burden. Aiden stood on the spot and waited for his employer's order. All right, let her know I'm willing to meet her soon somewhere else. It was time to have a good chat with Helen Hoffman, the Hoffman group.
The next afternoon, Xavier Woods arrived at the place where he had agreed to meet with Helen Hoffman. It was one of the most popular cafes in New York. The coffee here was known for its strong flavors. Xavier arrived early. Despite the fame of the cafe, he simply ordered a pot of black coffee. He took a seat by the window and sipped on his beverage. His thoughts drifted to the past. This was a place his mother had brought him before. Earlier, this place had not been as luxurious as it was now. It was simply built and had a few tables and benches for people to drink coffee, play chess, or eat. Right now, this place looked like a stereotypical New York cafe and was filled with tourists. Almost everyone who came to New York would come here. As a result, the price of a cup of coffee had skyrocketed in just a few years. His mother had brought him here to take a rest from the cold and had ordered a pot of black coffee and some donuts. Xavier loved it. It was the first time he and his mother had ever been in a big city like New York. His mom had told him that his dad lived here, so they actually had come here to see him. He hadn't seen his father since he was born. Every time I talk about dad, mom doesn't look so happy, Xavier thought. At that time, he didn't really understand why. Now that he thought about it, it was his mother's heartache because she loved someone who was already married to someone else. With the sound of footsteps behind him, Xavier paused the trip down memory lane. He raised his head and saw Helen Hoffman standing next to him. Mrs. Hoffman, please take a seat, Xavier greeted her. Helen's face remained guarded, but she sat down on the seat opposite him. Xavier poured Helen some coffee from the pot. I heard that the coffee here is quite good. Helen was surprised to see him pouring coffee for her. Mr. Woods, you're too kind. Xavier nodded and continued. It's my mom's favorite coffee. Helen's hand that was holding the cup froze. She looked at the cup in her hand with a daze. With a blink of an eye, she placed the cup down on the table. I'm sorry, I have a bad stomach, Helen said. Xavier smiled. If that's the case, then Mrs. Hoffman should have some green tea. With that, Xavier ordered a cup of green tea for Helen. Facing Xavier, Helen felt a faint sense of being stifled. She knew that he had hidden himself very well. If she took the wrong step, then she would be in danger. While she was calculating, Xavier looked at her and said, I heard that you wanted to see me yesterday. Helen nodded. Yes, there was something I wanted to ask you. What is it? Xavier didn't beat around the bush. Helen didn't expect him to be so straightforward. I hope you can answer me truthfully. Of course, Xavier nodded. Did you buy Ophelia's shares in Hillcrest? This was what Helen was most concerned about. Xavier shook his head. No. Helen frowned, clearly not believing his words. That John Brown isn't your minion? John is just my friend. His company happens to be in the same industry as well, Xavier answered. Helen questioned him again. You're saying that you are not involved in this. Xavier smiled without saying anything. He took another sip of his coffee. Helen saw Xavier's expression. She knew the situation had something to do with him. Otherwise, he wouldn't have made such a face. Mr. Woods, tell me honestly, do you also want to control Hillcrest? Hearing Helen's words, Xavier slowly looked up at her. Mrs. Hoffman, why do you say also? Helen was stunned as she realized that she had said something wrong. Although Xavier might already know about it, she had still let vital information slip. Xavier smirked and it looked like he didn't pay much attention to what Helen had just said. He instead asked, Mrs. Hoffman, since you've asked all you wanted to know, I have a question for you. Helen looked at him. And what do you want to ask? About Ophelia's mother. Helen remembered what Xavier had said the last time they met. Xavier nodded slightly. Of course, Helen wouldn't give Xavier information so easily. She had already prepared herself. I have a condition. Xavier's face remained unchanged. Mrs. Hoffman, you're quite smart. Aren't you afraid that I'll reveal your secret? Helen's face turned pale. Xavier seemed to be shrewd and scheming, threatening her instead. She trembled. What do you know? Xavier knocked on the table. There seemed to be a hint of annoyance on his face. Hmm, let me think about this. About Hillcrest or the will? Or the property of the Hoffman group? Are you and Mr. Hoffman still hiding that other secret? Helen felt a cold sweat trickling down her back. It seemed that Xavier knew everything. 
Xavier also saw Helen's expression change. Mrs. Hoffman, if you feel this isn't enough, then I... It's enough! Helen immediately interrupted him. I'll tell you. Xavier nodded in satisfaction. I believe you wouldn't lie to me. Xavier didn't say the latter part explicitly, but he thought Helen would understand it from his face. Helen was furious at Xavier, to say the least, and would have liked nothing more than to see him dead. He had the gall to threaten her. Of course, was her only response. Ten years ago, Ruth Walters brought a child to the Hill family and asked Richard Hill to take care of her. At that time, Richard already had some success in his career. He was in a comfortable position in life, so it wasn't a big deal for him to pay and raise a child, Helen recalled. Ophelia and Damon could be considered to have grown up together. That's how Margaret Lawrence and I got to know each other. At the time, the two just happened to be in junior high school. At one of the PTA meets, I saw Margaret, who looked very haggard. She didn't tell me what had happened, but I could sniff it from a mile away. The news of Richard Hill cheating on his wife was well known. When Xavier heard this, he felt sorry for Ophelia. At the time, she was under a lot of pressure. It seems the trauma of that time in her life must have affected her greatly. Helen continued, At that time, Margaret's health was deteriorating, and she fell seriously ill soon after. When she was hospitalized, Ruth had personally gone to the hospital to look after her. Every day, she had personally attended to Margaret herself. From an outsider's point of view, Ruth really understood what was to be done, and even though she was the other woman, she seemed to be caring for Margaret. But it was not as it seemed. Helen's eye suddenly filled with disgust. Ruth was a vicious snake. I remember that day when I went to see Margaret at the hospital and overheard Ruth talking to the doctor. It turned out she was slowly killing Mark by poisoning and drugging her meals. This was the plan she came up with by bribing Mark's doctor. Her goal was to let Margaret die early so she could easily walk into the Hill family and take her place as matriarch. Xavier was seething with anger. Ruth was a monster. Not long after that, Margaret died. Claiming that she had died of an illness, Ruth married Richard Hill as she had wished. Helen felt a rare tinge of pity. If Margaret was still here, Hillcrest would definitely not be in such a situation as it is today. Unfortunately, there were just too many things that the Hills have done wrong over the years. Helen finished. Xavier narrowed his eyes and looked at her. Since you know the truth, why don't you just say it out loud? What would Xavier's next move be, now that he's discovered the truth? Helen was at a loss for words when she heard what Xavier had said. He continued, Actually, if you had said it at that time, the result might not have been like this. You're a bit selfish, aren't you? Helen looked at him for a while and then suddenly laughed. If I had said something back then, you wouldn't have known Ophelia at all. If Margaret was still alive, no way she would have agreed to let Ophelia marry you. Xavier chuckled. Not necessarily true. Some people are just destined to meet. Just like you said, if Ophelia's mother was still here, then the Hill family definitely wouldn't be what it was today. This is what she wanted to know. I've given you the information, Helen retorted. She didn't want to talk to Xavier about anything else, lest she accidentally ends up leaking new, sensitive information. Xavier nodded. Thank you. He planned to investigate and follow up on this situation thoroughly. Helen looked at him. After hesitating a moment, she asked, What is your relationship with Ophelia? What do you think our relationship is? Xavier didn't want to blow the cover regarding his relationship with Ophelia. After all, the secrecy and lack of knowledge among others could still be exploited. Helen grunted. I think that you're hiding it. You told me you'd be honest with your answers. I never hid it, Xavier answered. But Helen had other concerns. Mr. Woods, I hope you won't interfere in the matters of Hillcrest. Xavier was the real reason Helen had come out and agreed to a meeting. He assured her, Hillcrest is not a good deal. I am not interested. Helen relaxed a little after hearing his words. 
As long as he didn't interfere, everything else would be fine. Xavier looked at the time. Mrs. Hoffman, I have something to do later. I'll be leaving. He stood up. I have some souvenirs for you to take back, Mrs. Hoffman, as a thank you for agreeing to this meeting. Looking at Xavier's departing figure, Helen was a little angry. He got what he wanted and left just like that. She also didn't understand his words until the waiter brought over a few boxes of packaged delicacies. Xavier knew that she liked the pastries and desserts on offer here, so he had prepared them for her. Helen didn't seem to think that Xavier Woods was rude anymore when she saw the takeaway parcels. When Helen returned home, she saw Elijah Hoffman sitting in the living room. Dad, she exclaimed. Elijah nodded as he saw Helen walk in. You're back? Yes. Helen answered. Following that, Elijah saw Helen carrying something in her hand. Went for coffee with a friend? Yes. Helen nodded and offered Elijah a pastry. I can make you some tea with this, Father. Elijah reached out his hand to take it. I don't usually eat between meals, he said. He was a stickler for rules. Helen was a little embarrassed. Okay. She didn't say anything else and went back to her room to change. After Elijah opened the box... His face changed. A glazed donut. His favorite. However, his hands could not hold the donut properly, and the entire box slipped from his hands and fell to the floor. First time he and Lisa Woods met at a cafe was when she was munching on a glazed donut. She just happened to walk into the cafe because she was bored, and he saw her full of vigor and was attracted to her instantly. Dad, what's wrong? Helen saw the scene the moment she came out of her room. Elijah came back to his senses. I'm sorry, I couldn't hold it steady, so it all fell to the ground. After cleaning up, Helen brought a donut for Elijah on a plate. Elijah revealed a helpless expression. I'm old, but I shouldn't be useless. The donut was shiny, and it was very soft and sweet. It tasted bitter in Elijah's mouth because of the strong memory it invoked. Helen realized there was something wrong with the old man's face. What's going on with him? When she looked again at the cafe's insignia, she suddenly understood. Xavier's scheming wasn't ordinary. Seems like this particular cafe must have something to do with Dad. Earlier, she didn't suspect the reason behind Xavier asking her to meet there. She naturally felt that he must have chosen this place because of its fame. She never would have thought that there was some significance behind it. Elijah Hoffman suddenly spoke up. Could I have another one? Of course. Helen nodded. However, from the looks of it, the old man seemed to be reminiscing about his past, or perhaps thinking about that woman, or even Xavier. Helen's expression darkened. She was being used by Xavier Woods. It seemed like he wanted to use all these little incidents and reminders to achieve his goal. As expected, his words couldn't be trusted at all. Seeing the pain on Elijah's face, she knew it was something Xavier had specially orchestrated. Helen, what day is tomorrow? Elijah asked. Tomorrow is Monday, Father, Helen replied. Elijah Hoffman seemed to look more spirited. Tell Andrew I'll return to the office tomorrow. When Helen heard this, she felt a little uneasy. The old man was going back to the company? What was he trying to do? It seemed like she had to draw Damon and Andrew's attention towards this. Afterwards, she called them to report on the incident, telling them to pay heed to it especially regarding Hillcrest. Xavier left the cafe and went straight to the Sequoia Turner offices. Sir, why are you here? For Nick Francis, who ate and slept in his company office, Xavier's appearance was indeed strange. Xavier sat opposite Nick. When is he tender for the land east of the city going to be floated? Nick immediately checked on his laptop. Uh, middle of next month, he answered. What's wrong? Are, are you interested? Xavier nodded. Definitely. Nick knew Xavier very well. When he made a decision, there was nothing that could possibly stop him. The land at the east of the city was a good business opportunity. If coal can be taken there, then they'd have a solid foothold in New York. It's just that we're running out of time right now. We don't have any plans or designs, so it's hard to accomplish anything. Nick looked worried. No need to worry about that. Xavier, on the other hand, looked confident. When Nick heard his words... He knew that Xavier had a plan. What, have you decided on something? Do you have something planned? Not me, Xavier answered. 
Not, not you, did, did Jason? Nick had some doubt. Having recently heard that Jason has been occupied with a lot of work, he shouldn't have any time to prepare a plan. Xavier took out a USB drive from his pocket and handed it to Nick. There's something in here. Take a look when you have the time. If you need any modifications or changes, remember to flag them. As Nick received it, he immediately plugged it into the computer and opened the file on the USB flash drive. When he clicked on the file, he looked at Xavier in shock. He didn't speak, but simply dragged the mouse all the way to the end. Nick saw that the signature on the proposal was Ophelia's. Nick blinked and looked at Xavier. What's wrong? Xavier asked. Nick had not expected Xavier to bring Ophelia's proposal. Is this okay? Is there something wrong with it? Xavier had a slightly relaxed expression. Whoa, this... Nick was worried that there might be something wrong. Xavier answered. The reason Hillcrest didn't adopt the plan was because they didn't have the money to implement it. I want to do it with Sequoia. There's no problem. Nick understood what Xavier meant. I'll prepare a budget as soon as possible, he said. It's just that we still need to provide a concrete design for the construction so the authorities can verify it. There will be a designer here tomorrow. Her name is Jane Stewart, Xavier answered. Nick felt uneasy after hearing Xavier's suggestion. Jane Stewart? Is she another acquaintance? Xavier nodded. She's Ophelia's close friend. Nick felt that Xavier was being selfish. Are you just going to give every project to your relatives and friends? First Ophelia and now this? Just worried you might destroy your company? Xavier asked. Jane's work is also in the flash drive. Did you notice? Nick had nothing more to say. Since you've already made your decision, I don't have any choice but to agree. Xavier smiled. How about dinner together? I'll ask John to come too. Nick agreed. Grateful not to have to eat cold sandwiches again tonight. He also decided to finally take a look at Ophelia's proposal and Jane's design plans. Ophelia's plan wasn't half bad. With just a slight modification, it definitely had the potential to be brilliant and mark its presence on the Upper East Side. Jane's design style was bold and unique compared to the area's current architectural style. With her visionary design, there was a strong possibility of it being a New York City landmark. It seemed that Xavier was very confident in both of them. Otherwise, he wouldn't have accepted their work. Nick was about to enter the restaurant when he saw John already at the table. I didn't expect you to arrive so soon, Nick said, sitting down next to him. John raised his head from among a pile of papers and looked at Nick. My life is miserable. Nick saw that John was studying domestic marriage laws and some divorce cases. What the hell are these? he asked, confused. John looked aggrieved. Xavier has sent me on a mission. Nick was stunned. What? Surely Xavier couldn't be thinking of getting a divorce from Ophelia, right? That couldn't be the case. They just got married, and they seemed to really like each other. John ran a hand through his hair, ignoring his friend. All this reading is giving me a headache. Hey, it's a chance for you to learn law. Didn't you always want to be a lawyer? John stopped. If I'd known this was what I'd be doing, I wouldn't have gone back to the practice. Nick casually picked up a few papers and started reading as well. I was getting a divorce. Xavier said that it's Ophelia's friend, John replied. What's her name? John handed him a piece of paper. Nick looked at the name. Jane Stewart? You know her? Yeah, she'll be uh, coming by the offices tomorrow to start design work on one of our projects, Nick answered. Arranged by Xavier. John nodded. He's doing his best for Ophelia's friends. <laughs> Tell me about it. Nick also nodded back. Between Jane and her husband. John sighed. He's been cheating on her with a bunch of girls. She's in a real vulnerable position. Nick patted John on the soldier. You can do it, man. This is small beans for you. John looked at Nick. Nick, why are you annoying me so much? Annoying you? No. I want to complain to Xavier about you, John said jokingly. At that moment, the restaurant door swung open and Xavier walked in. Complain about who, he asked. John immediately stood up. I have a complaint regarding Nick. It wasn't the first time Xavier had seen them argue, so he ignored them and sat down. Nick looked behind Xavier, but he didn't see Ophelia. Is Mrs. Woods not here? She and Jane are having dinner at home, Xavier answered. John figured that Xavier wanted to give Ophelia some space, which was why the three of them were having dinner together. 
So the man didn't want his wife with him for dinner, so he asked us two bachelors to come over instead, John said in a mock serious tone. Xavier looked at his phone. That's not true. Ophelia wanted me to treat you guys to a meal. Nick and John looked at each other. Ophelia's idea in the first place. They said in unison. Then we must thank Ophelia in that case. Xavier casually changed the subject. John, is problem with this case? He asked. Probably not, John replied. Crush that man and take as much as you can from him, Xavier said. John nodded. All right, don't worry, I'll, um, <clears throat> I'll do my best. Xavier nodded, too. You can go to the office tomorrow as well. Ask Jane about the details. John lifted his hand and made an okay gesture. Mate, I am hungry. Can I eat first? Xavier smiled and asked them to place their order. Nick and John ate heartily until their stomachs were full. Xavier ate only a little and seemed happier to see his friends eat. When Nick saw Xavier barely touching his food, he reminded him of what Ophelia had told him before. Ophelia told you to eat too. Xavier glanced at Nick nonchalantly. What? You my boss now? How would I dare? It's Ophelia's order, not mine. Nick feigned innocence. Xavier smiled at his friend. He picked up his plate and reluctantly helped himself to some food. When John saw this, he whispered, Xavier listens to Ophelia. In the future, things are going to be easier for us. However, Nick shook his head. Can't use that method too much. My back hurts someday. Hearing this reminder, John also nodded. While Xavier's anger was truly terrifying, his old friends were more afraid of his cleverness when it came to getting back at them. After the meal, the three of them left the restaurant. Since their destinations lay in the same direction, John and Xavier got into his car and left. Nick took a taxi back to the office. As soon as he entered the room, his phone rang. His expression immediately turned grim. Why don't you come back? Nick's tone was filled with rage. The next morning, Ophelia and Jane arrived at the company together. When Nick saw Jane, he stopped his work. Nick, this is Jane Stewart. Ophelia introduced them to each other. Nick nodded. Yes, I've heard about her from Xavier. Please, take a seat, Miss Stewart. Ophelia knew that Nick was going to interview Jane, so she didn't say much and left them alone. Nick noticed Jane looked a little frazzled. He smiled, trying to put her at ease. Miss Stewart, you seem to be nervous. A little. Jane responded. Relax, Nick said with a smile. He asked a few questions about construction design, and Jane managed to answer them all correctly. After the formalities were over, Nick handed Jane the design requirements of the land on the east side of the city. This is an important region that we'll have control of soon, he said. Take a look at the relevant information. I hope to see your first draft by the end of the week. He was about to leave when he saw the worried expression on Jane's face. Jane was surprised. She had just been sent to the office and was being sent off to work already? What, is there a problem? Nick asked. Jane shook her head. I'm afraid I won't be able to do a very good job. Nick looked at Jane with a serious expression. Xavier should have told you before that our requirements are very high. Seen your previous designs. I don't think it'll be that difficult to task for you, he said firmly. Jane felt both motivated and under pressure. Mr. Harris, I'll do my best. What I want from you is not your best. I want you to achieve the desired results, Nick continued. He wanted to encourage Jane to improve. Otherwise, her potential wouldn't be unlocked. All right, Jane nodded. Earlier, Jane probably wouldn't have dared to make any promises. Hearing Nick's strong words, she wanted to prove herself. Nick pressed a button on his intercom and called Ophelia in. Mr. Harris, you called me? Ophelia entered the room. Sit down, I have something to show you. Nick said. He took out a folder and handed it to Ophelia. She flipped through the folder and saw that it was the earlier proposal she had made for the eastern part of the city. This is the plan that was supposed to be Hilker, Nick answered. Ophelia knew this was her work. She didn't know how Nick had gotten it. Seeing her look at him with suspicion, Nick narrowed his eyes. Mrs. Woods, are you suspecting that I stole something from you? I just... Ophelia didn't expect Nick to suddenly confront her. Nick laughed. This was given to me by Mr. Woods. I've seen it before, and it is a pretty good plan, but I also have some questions regarding it. Ophelia froze, as if she didn't quite understand what Nick meant. Mr. Harris, do you 
I'm going to use your plan to develop our land to the east of the city, Nick said directly. What? Ophelia couldn't believe what Nick was proposing. She had a preliminary estimate of the plan, and it required a lot of funding and support. If it was modified, the funds required would still be huge. Ophelia frowned. Mr. Harris, even the Hoffman Group didn't dare take this project on. They're in alliance with several hedge funds, and only they can possibly bid on it. For us. Nick suddenly laughed. What? You don't think Sequoia can get this project done? No, Ophelia said apprehensively. You don't have to worry about that. Just do your job well and leave the rest to me, Nick said confidently. Ophelia, Jane, I pass this mission over to you two today, Nick said with a smile. This is your chance to prove yourself. I know you can make all of us proud. Ophelia felt pressure. Seeing Nick's confidence, she tried to muster up her courage. She didn't expect her dream project would just fall into her hands. It all seemed too good to be true. All right, time is of the essence. Hurry up and get to work, Nick said, ending their conversation. Two women left. Nick called Xavier and updated him on the plans. He hung up the phone and was working when his phone rang again. Looking at the number, it was the same one that had called him last night. Nick felt a headache coming on, but he picked it up anyway. Hello, Nick answered. I'm at the airport. Can you pick me up? A woman answered. I'm busy. The other person seemed to understand. All right, then I'll take a cab to the hotel. Let's have dinner together tonight. Sure, Nick said as he hung up the phone. He put his hands on his head and pressed his fingers to his temples. Why did this woman come back? She was only going to cause trouble. If she managed to piss off Xavier Woods somehow, it would be a huge problem for Nick. Nick sighed. He looked up and saw Ophelia and Jane sitting together outside, discussing the plan. It helped feel there was something wrong with Xavier, arranging this huge deal around his wife and her friend. Ophelia and Jane were working overtime. It was the first time they had received such a big project. Pressure was slowly building, with the two of them the driving forces behind the project. They were planning the best way forward, not wanting to screw it up. By 8 o'clock in the morning, two of them finally made some progress and were satisfied with how everything was going. Jane, are you hungry? Can we order some takeout? Ophelia asked. Jane nodded. She might as well have dinner here with her friend rather than by herself in her room. Ophelia ordered takeout, and the two continued to talk while they ate. By the time they had finished, it was nine. Why don't you go back home? In any case, Mr. Woods is waiting for you, Jane said as she looked at the time. Ophelia was sure that Xavier could wait a few hours if he wasn't busy. In any case, Ophelia wanted to be with Jane and work a little more. She smiled. It's all right. We pretty much see each other every day, so I can go home later. Wouldn't he be worried about you? He also has his own things to do. We're fighting for our dreams, Ophelia said. Jane smiled. All right, then. Just when the two had packed up and were about to leave, Nick walked in with a tall and slender woman. He was surprised to see Ophelia and Jane packing up. You haven't gone back yet? Ophelia immediately replied. It's almost time. We were just leaving. Do you want me to call you a taxi? Nick asked. He felt some responsibility towards Ophelia. If anything happened to her, he definitely wouldn't be able to bear the consequences. Ophelia shook her head. She saw that the woman beside Nick had been staring at her the whole time. She was slightly taller than her and very attractive. Ophelia felt conscious as the woman stared at the two. Both Ophelia and Jane hurried out of the office. Nick, those two, the woman asked. New employees, Nick answered. All right, you've seen the offices now. It's time to leave. Well, why are we in such a hurry? The woman looked confused. Nick frowned. Ella, enough! They were the only two people left in the office. It was so quiet that their breathing could be clearly heard. Ella opened her red lip. It's not like I did anything. Why are you so nervous? Nick was not interested in what she was saying. He was very familiar with Ella's methods. If she found out about Ophelia, she would definitely not let her be. Nick really couldn't understand why Xavier's grandfather would make such a decision. If he didn't confess he was already married, Norris Woods wouldn't have made his arrangements. Nick, what are you thinking about? Ella asked. He glanced at her. Uh, it's fine. I'm tired. You go home. I'll get you a cab. Ella didn't try to fight him. She knew it wouldn't do her any good. 
Nick's words held a lot of weight for Xavier. Of course, she wasn't going to offend one of his closest friends. All right, I'll leave now, she said with a smile. Speaking of which, you should get Xavier to arrange a place for you to stay. It's really not good to sleep at the office every day. Nick didn't want to talk to her anymore, so he simply gestured for Ella to leave. Okay, see you soon. Ella left, the sound of her high heels trailing behind her. Nick returned to his desk. He rubbed his eyes and called Xavier. Speak, Xavier answered on the other line. Xavier, Ella is back, Nick answered. She just saw Ophelia and Jane in the office. Xavier became silent. Nick waited for him to speak. Ella didn't ask about her? Xavier asked. Not yet. She doesn't know you're married as of now, Nick answered. I know. Xavier hung up the phone. He stood by the window, looking out into the night sky. It seems he wouldn't be able to hide his relationship with Ophelia for long. He had to think of a way to deal with the situation. Ella's appearance had forced Xavier to change some of his plans. Ophelia was about to leave for work when Xavier called for him. What's wrong? Ophelia asked. I might have to go out of town in a few days. Are you okay staying by yourself? Xavier asked. Ophelia felt a bit sad. Didn't you say that you wouldn't be going out for the time being? There's something urgent that came up, Xavier answered. Ophelia was aware of Xavier's dedication to work, so she didn't say anything. When are you leaving? Two days, Xavier answered. Ophelia nodded. That's fine. I'll take care of myself, and Jane's here too. I'll be fine. Xavier reached out and touched Ophelia's head. Don't exert yourself too much. Pay more attention to other things too. I will. Ophelia looked at the time. I'm going to be late to the office. Be careful on your way. Xavier bid her farewell. After she left, Aiden walked into the living room. Why are you avoiding Mrs. Woods? Aiden asked, aware of Xavier's itinerary. Xavier glanced at Aiden. Ella Carter is here. Oh, God, she's in New York? Aiden felt a headache coming on. Xavier, why don't you just tell her that you're married to Ophelia? I don't think it'll be a problem. Xavier shook his head. It's not time yet. Aiden didn't understand Xavier's thoughts or his reasons, but since he said it wasn't time to reveal himself, Aiden could only listen to him and follow orders. How are you going to deal with Miss Carter? Xavier didn't have to deal with. After all, since she was here, he could find something for her to do and distract her. By noon, Ella had arrived at Xavier's house. Looking as good as ever, Mr. Woods. She greeted him with a smile. Xavier glanced. You heard Grandpa say you were coming over. If there's anything you need me to do, just tell me, Ella said. Of course, she also wanted to do something so that he wouldn't consider her annoying. Xavier seemed to think about it. I don't think I'm understaffed at all, he said flatly. Ella frowned. Xavier, I only want to help you. Your grandpa told me that I should listen to whatever you say. Xavier said, I really don't have anything I need you to do. Do you think I don't have the qualifications to be by your side? Ella pouted. Aiden, who overheard this, felt disgusted and commented, According to me, you don't have the qualifications to stay by anyone's side. Knowing that Ella would only cause him trouble, Xavier decided to push her over to John. John's been working on a case recently. It's been pretty tough for him. You should go take a look. Ella became excited when she heard that Xavier had something for her. All right, I'll go there right away. After Ella left, Aiden looked at Xavier. Sir, if you let her go to John, he's going to go crazy. It's the best arrangement, Xavier answered. You can't blame Grandpa for this, and if I want to relax, I can only hand her over to John, he thought, silently apologizing to his friend. It was a well-known secret at Sequoia that John loved money more than anything. As long as it was about money, he'd do just about anything. Besides, Xavier had tried and tested this trick on him many times. John was Uncle Scrooge, who would do anything for money. Of course, he did have a limit. Other than Xavier's orders, he wouldn't ever get himself involved in anything illegal. Aiden, call John and tell him to keep Ella occupied. I'll give him a bonus this month, he said. Yes, sir, Aiden replied. Aiden called John, who got agitated and started complaining. Mr. Woods think I am. Ella to me? Busy as is, don't you know? Mr. Woods said I'll give you a bonus this month. Please, I can accept others. Not Ella Carter, answered John. And I have a date with my girlfriend. I haven't been able to see her because there's been too much work. 
Today's the only day I'm free. Aiden handed the phone to Xavier, who was the only person who could handle John. Xavier took the phone. John, are you in trouble, or is there a problem with the work? Xavier, I'm at my wit's end right now. I'm too tired. John shouted. Xavier smirked. All right, then. Since you don't want any extra bonuses, I'll save a sum of money for myself. Not a problem for me at all. Xavier, I really don't think I have the energy for this. Nick, deal with it. John unexpectedly refused this time. Xavier nodded. Okay. Then you'll have all your bonuses deducted this month, along with the special allowance you had asked me for. What? You doing? I only said I don't want the extra bonuses. I, I didn't say I don't want any of them for this month. John was exasperated. Xavier said, I'll give you 20% more to accept this job. John sighed. Well, for the money. Mate, you have to get rid of her soon. She, she just doesn't stop. Xavier nodded. Make her tired. John replied. I'll try. Xavier put down his phone. John was right. He had to think of a way to deal with Ella. Otherwise, it would just snowball into a bigger problem for him in the future. At the end of the workday, Xavier wanted to pick Ophelia up from work, but she told him she was still working overtime. He felt a wave of affection for her. He wanted her to eat on time, so he took her out for some food. As soon as he entered, he saw Ophelia and Jane working in the meeting room. They seemed to be discussing something intensely. The table was piled high with papers and drawings. Nick stood up when he saw Xavier come in. Why are you here? I got some food. Xavier replied, placing it on the table. Nick looked at the meeting room next door. He smiled and said, Are you worried about them? Xavier didn't deny it. How are they doing? Nick smiled flatly. I think they have potential. They've grown confident over time and they've done their research. After hearing Nick's reply, Xavier relaxed a little. Two of them are really going all out. Xavier sat down on the side. You have to look over them. After all, they're new to the game now. Don't worry about it. Just when Ophelia was about to pour a glass of water, her eyes met Xavier's. She smiled, mouthing, Why are you here? Xavier pointed at the lunchbox on the table. Nick couldn't stand Xavier and Ophelia eyeing each other through the glass. Xavier, I'm going to go out and get some fresh air. After Nick left, Ophelia walked over to Xavier. You should eat something. Xavier reached out to brush away the hair on Ophelia's face. The work for today isn't over yet? Nope, still got a lot to do. Jane has really high requirements for herself, so she doesn't think it's all right to just design a few plans. Xavier let out a faint smile. Maybe you guys can go out and have a look. Maybe you'll get some new inspiration. Ophelia thought about it. They could actually go and observe it. This might be helpful and also might trigger something different. I'll talk to Jane right away. With that, Ophelia quickly returned to the meeting room. Xavier was smiling. How great would it be if this girl kept her energy up all the time? However, would the following matter really go as smoothly as he had imagined? Xavier suddenly didn't have much confidence in himself. Could it be because of her? On the way back, Ophelia fell asleep in the car again. She was exhausted. Over the next few days, Ophelia and Jane were so busy they barely had time to blink. However, they completed their work within the time that Nick had set for them. Nick had sent Xavier all the plans and designs that he had examined. Ophelia and Jane were nervous, waiting for the final results. Nick had said that Xavier would send it over to Jason for his approval. That made Ophelia even more uneasy. She had already heard of Jason and his amazing achievements. She held a lot of respect for him. Oh, I'm nervous, Jane whispered. Me too. They had to wait for a very long time to hear the feedback, because Xavier was in a meeting with Jason on the other end of the range to discuss the plans. Jason didn't speak for a long time after he saw their work. Xavier didn't rush him, as he was, after all, an authority in this area. Xavier, this proposal doesn't look like your usual style. Xavier bounced off him. Well, what do you think about it? Overall, it's okay, Jason replied. There were a few small places that need some modification, but this plan is actually pretty perfect. You mark out what you think needs to be changed. I'll let him change it later. All right. Jason picked up his pen and whizzed it around the screen. 
And this design, if you could be a little bit bolder, I think it'll work better. Xavier finally felt reassured. Ophelia and Jane hadn't let him down after all. Jason saw Xavier's satisfied expression and looked at him seriously. Xavier, it looks like you're very happy. You haven't told me who did it. It's not bad. My wife. Jason's calm eyes were replaced with a look of surprise. What? He had heard the news from John a few days ago. He had always wanted to see what his wife looked like. But today, he was the first to see how she worked. Well, I guess you always make good choices, Xavier. Thank you. Jason laughed. Next time, don't be so secretive. Go and work now. Knowing that Jason was supporting the company by himself, Xavier didn't want to waste too much of his time. I'll see you later then. Xavier then sent Jason's feedback to Nick. When he heard the news, his expression was somewhat strange. He thought Xavier would be the one to make the final decision. He didn't expect him to send a message to Jason. Looking at the places Jason had pointed out, Nick couldn't help but admire him for being super detail-oriented pointing out the smallest details and flaws. Ophelia and Jane were equally surprised when they saw the new proposal. Jason had noticed the minutest things. Someone once said that details determine success or failure. This was a living example. Nick smiled at Ophelia and Jane. Very good. Keep working hard. Xavier is also very satisfied. All right. Ophelia and Jane looked at each other and smiled. Nick knew they had worked overtime this week just to complete this. It seemed like Xavier's decision was right. Let's use the remaining time to revise the plan. Sounds good. Ophelia came out of Nick's office immediately and called Xavier. The plan has been approved. It's good. Be careful not to get too tired. Okay. Ophelia wanted to speak to Xavier face to face. Unfortunately, he was out of town. She missed him immensely. Xavier paused for a moment. Go back home and rest early today. I'll take you out to dinner when you're back. If it hadn't been for Xavier, she wouldn't have been able to come up with such a plan. He'd always given her a lot of encouragement and support. Xavier chuckled at Ophelia's insistence. All right, but I still have things to do here. <laughs> yes, I know. It was you. Come back soon. Although she was reluctant, she put down her phone. Xavier had been gone for two days, but she still missed him. Jane saw Ophelia sitting behind her in a daze. Thinking about the husband, she teased Ophelia. Yeah. Ophelia nodded, suddenly shy. Jane felt envious of her. She had met the person she was destined to be with after her divorce from Damon. Would she be so lucky as well? Ophelia turned around and glanced at Jane. What are you thinking about? Nothing. Ophelia suddenly thought of Jane's case. By the way, is your case going to trial tomorrow? Yep, Jane nodded. John said I don't have to be there. Ophelia really admired John. She held Jane's hand as if to say that everything would be fine. For the first time since they had started working on the project, they both got off work on time. Jane walked aimlessly on the street. She didn't know where she was going. Passing a bar, Jane spotted an acquaintance who waved at her. Why are you here? Damon spoke first. I'm going home, Jane replied. Although Damon was already drunk, he still remembered that Jane didn't live there. He lazily leaned against the wall. From the looks of it, you must have left your husband. Jane's eyes darkened. She didn't expect Damon to know about her divorce. Damon looked at her. Jane... It's good to leave a man like Jane didn't want to talk to Damon too much. She wanted to walk past him. However, Damon pulled her arm, making her recoil in shock. Jane looked at Damon. What are you trying to do? I forgot to bring money to you. Cover me this time, please. I'll pay you back, I swear. Jane looked at Damon in surprise. High-spirited? Right now, he could only be described as someone who had too much spirit in him. I never thought you'd stumble like this, Jane said. Damon sneered. Who are you to criticize me? Since he knew he was wrong, he might as well pull himself together. What kind of problems can one solve by drinking like this every day? Of course not, Jane replied. If it weren't for the fact she knew him, she wouldn't have bothered with him. Suddenly, the bar's manager came out to collect the money. Damon glanced at the bill, then handed it to Jane. She took the bill and then was stunned when she saw the number on it. 
Damon been drinking tonight. Um, uh, I'll pay by card. Sure. Damon, of course, also saw Jane's expression. He took off his watch and placed it in Jane's hand. That watch will cover the cost of it. Jane returned his watch and said, I'll be leaving now. Damon looked at Jane's back. What? What, are you looking down on me now? Jane turned around and glared at him. If you give up on yourself, what will others think of you? Do you really think you're the worst in this world? You're actually a lot better than some people. Damon stood on the spot, lost deep in thought. The next day, the developers released the news, announcing the list of companies that would be working on the final bidding. The results surprised industry insiders, who initially thought that the Hoffman industry would be the only candidate. But there was now another contender, Sequoia Turner. An unfamiliar company dared to challenge the Hoffmans. This made a lot of people in the industry intrigued. Soon, someone found out more information about Sequoia Turner. Turned out it was the multinational company Sequoia. After Andrew read the news, his face changed. Robert looked at his son and said, This time, Xavier is preparing to officially start a war with us. Andrew squinted his eyes. Did he think he could win just because he had Sequoia as a background? Robert was a bit worried. We cannot underestimate Sequoia, he said. Dad, what do we do now? I'll go with you to next week's bidding, Robert replied. He also wanted to see just how powerful this half-brother of his was. Andrew nodded. Dad, I think it's better not to let Grandpa know about this. Robert knew that his family was already aware of the bid, but he didn't show it. He wanted to see just how strong Xavier's company was. He was sure that Damon and Andrew would not stand by idly. The more time that passed, the calmer he had to remain. After receiving the news, Nick, Ophelia, and Jane discussed the final details. When that time comes, both of you are going to make a speech. You have to be prepared. We only have one chance. I'm worried that I can't do it. Ophelia knew her capabilities. Since this bid was so important, she didn't want to make any mistakes. Nick smiled. Ophelia, you have to have confidence in yourself. This plan is your doing. Moreover, Xavier assigned this responsibility to both of you. Nick nodded and opened the email he received. If you don't believe me, then look for yourself. Ophelia took the phone from Nick and looked at the email. Nick continued. You two have to work hard. This is an opportunity to prove your capabilities. All right, I'll do my best. If we succeed in winning this bid, there might even be an additional reward. Nick said with a smile. He hoped Xavier's decision was right. He must have realized what was going to happen next. Ophelia held Jane's hand. Jane, we have to do our best. Excited, Ophelia thought of Xavier. If only he were here. She actually wanted to give this speech in front of Xavier more. If it wasn't for him, she would definitely be struggling. Mr. Harris, do you know when Xavier will be back? Ophelia asked. When Nick heard this, he couldn't help but laugh. Do you miss your husband? Then call him. He seems very busy these days. Of course, Nick answered. Ophelia hesitated for a moment. Do you know his itinerary? I don't, actually. Sorry, Nick replied. At the end of the day, John arrived at the office with the court's verdict. Jane, I have good news, he said excitedly. Ophelia looked at John. What's the verdict? Very good. When Jane saw it, she wept with joy. Finally, she was free. Thank you, John, she said. John smiled. You're welcome. I also did what the head said. The head? Ophelia asked, perplexed. Nick often talked about the head, so she knew that his boss was William. And now that John mentioned a head, who was he referring to? Ophelia assumed the head that both Nick and John were talking about was the same person. They seemed to work for Sequoia, too, but Xavier never mentioned him. As soon as he finished, John received a warning from Nick. Realizing that he had said something wrong, John quickly corrected himself. Well, I took Jane's case, so this time you're my boss. John's explanation was a bit far-fetched, but Ophelia didn't think too much about it. Jane was in a good mood. Dinner is on me today. All right! John nodded excitedly when he heard there was food. Nick mocked him. Do you only know how to eat? Can't I? Ophelia smiled. You two must have a really good relationship with each other. This guy and I can be considered friends when we're not fighting, Nick answered. Xavier too? 
Nick and John looked at each other. No, Xavier is much higher up than us. Soon, the day of the bidding arrived. Before Ophelia left, Xavier gave her a call. Do your best today. I believe in you, he said. Ophelia potted. You're not here. I still love you. Ophelia smiled. When will you get back? Soon, Xavier replied. After Ophelia left, Xavier walked out from the mansion next door. Aiden followed him. Xavier hadn't gone out of town. He had stayed in the five seasons for the past week. Xavier, we can leave any time as well. Xavier nodded. Today was a big day for him. Not only was Ophelia in the first show of Sequoia, but it was a key battle for him. He had placed all of his chips on Ophelia and Jane. As the head of Sequoia, he was confident. However, as Ophelia's husband, he was worried. So he had to go to the scene to have a look. Mr. Xavier, can we go? Aiden asked. Xavier opened the car door and got in. The bid was to be held in the conference room of New York's Five Star Hotel. Of course, there were also quite a few media outlets who had received the news and rushed over. The Hoffmans arrived first. Demon and Andrew appeared and soon, quite a few reporters surrounded them. At this moment, Nick brought Ophelia and Jane to the scene in a low-key manner. When Ophelia saw the two interviewees, she quickly retracted. Jane was a little worried for Ophelia. Are you all right? Ophelia shook her head. Let's go in first. Andrew saw a familiar figure in the background. Dad, I think I saw Ophelia, Andrew whispered. Hearing his son's words, Robert also became alert. Really? I'm not sure. He refused an interview and walked into the venue with Andrew. At the signing site, they saw Nick's name. Dad, seems like Xavier Woods is here. Both of their faces darkened. Xavier actually took the initiative this time. Surprising. In their case, that woman Andrew saw just now was really Ophelia. Go in. The moment they entered, Damon and Andrew saw Ophelia in her formal attire. She was talking to a man. It wasn't Xavier. As expected. Ophelia walked by, and Robert opened his mouth and walked over to talk to her. Robert looked at the documents in her hand. Ophelia, are you a representative of Poya Turner today? Robert's words drew everyone's attention. Ophelia glanced at him but did not reply. She merely gave him a slight nod. He turned around, carefully preparing the information for his speech. Andrew walked to Robert's side. Dad, let's sit down first. Robert glanced at Ophelia again before walking away and sitting down. The woman seated next to Ophelia, that's her friend as well, right? Andrew replied, I'm not sure. Robert squinted. From the looks of it, they were here to represent Sequoia Turner, but he couldn't understand what role they were playing here. Andrew lowered his voice and whispered in Robert's ear, Dad, the person sitting next to Ophelia isn't Xavier. When I saw his signature, it read Nick. Something seems to be off about this. Let's wait and see. Robert replied. This time, he couldn't afford to make any mistakes. Bidding began quickly. The Hoffmans first presented their proposal to everyone to create a children's theme park in the eastern part of the city. They made key recommendations and elaborated on their plans. Nick raised his eyebrows. The Hoffmans had done a good job this time, yes. The theme park was a bit unrealistic. Ophelia, don't be nervous. We've got a chance to win this. Nick lowered his voice. Meanwhile, Xavier sat on the second floor of the same building, keeping an eye on what was happening downstairs. John sat next to him. Xavier put down his phone and patted John on the back. Our turn soon, he said. John immediately replied, It's about to begin. Then he heard the host say, Next, we have a representative from Sequoia Turner on stage. Ophelia and Jane stood up at the same time, tidying their clothes before walking onto the stage. Robert and Andrew looked at Ophelia in surprise. Previously, they only thought that Ophelia was here as a representative, but they didn't think that she would come up on stage. Ophelia walked to the microphone and greeted. Good evening. I'm Ophelia, the head of Sequoia Turner's proposal for this bid. I will now present the relevant report for all of you. The screen quickly displayed Ophelia's presentation. Ophelia looked at the screen, took a deep breath, and began her speech. We conducted a market survey on the east side of the city. A list of data quickly appeared on the screen, and Ophelia analyzed them one by one. So, in response to the situation above, we, Sequoia Turner, have established a large comprehensive square here that integrates lights and entertainment. 
the presentation quickly switched to the next image. Our proposed square has the following aspects. In the living quarters, we will invite a famous supermarket chain. The developers slightly nodded their heads. Robert and Andrew didn't expect her to be so good. It seems like she had felt wronged when she was at Hillcrest before. Richard was blind to fire the only capable Ophelia. If not for her, their company would have collapsed a long time ago. Ophelia's abilities can't be underestimated, Robert continued. Let's find a time to ask her out for a chat. If possible, we can poach her to our company. Although Andrew was unwilling, he couldn't help but admire how well she had planned this. From the looks of it, Sequoia Turner was confident enough to take this piece of land. Andrew, it doesn't seem like we'll win this bid, Robert said. Andrew nodded, but he wouldn't let it end like this. On stage, Jane was displaying her design, which was very good in every section. This elicited a lot of praise from everyone present there. Sequoia Turner was really amazing, sending two young women to handle such a big case, and even getting such a good start. From the looks of it, the strength of the company behind them was even more unfathomable. As Ophelia and Jane walked off the stage, the others also nervously awaited for the results. Was it powerful Hoffman's, or did this new company, which had been registered for less than half of a year, take the lead? The hosts began to intensely discuss with each other. When Nick received Xavier's message, the corner of his mouth hooked up. He knew he would come today. Nick, are we really good? Ophelia asked. Nick said calmly, There's no problem, but it's hard to say that no one is going to make an issue. Upon hearing Nick's words, Ophelia looked towards Robert and Andrew sitting opposite her. Andrew's eyes were boring into hers, staring at her with a great deal of dissatisfaction. Ophelia averted her gaze and lowered her head to look at her own proposal. Suddenly, her phone vibrated. She picked it up and saw that it was a message from Xavier. You did well, it read. Ophelia smiled. It's not like you saw it. How do you know I did well? She typed and sent the message. My wife wouldn't let me down, Xavier quickly replied. With Xavier's support and encouragement, she calmed down. Jane smiled at Ophelia. Xavier sent a message? Ophelia laughed. Yes, he did. She nodded fondly. The auction host walked up to the stage. It seemed the result has been decided. Compared to Ophelia and Jane, Nick was very calm. Back then, when he and Xavier traveled together, they were able to face situations and dangers that were even more difficult than this. The host's eyes quickly turned to them and began to announce. Following the detailed speech by both of the companies and the discussion amongst organizers, we have come to a unanimous decision. The winner of this competition for an East Side City project is Sequoia Turner. The crowd immediately burst into applause. When Ophelia and Jane heard this, they were both stunned. Was it really the name she said? Sequoia Turner? Nick stood up first with a smile on his face. He looked at Ophelia and Jane and said, Congratulations. Seeing that the focus of the audience was on the three of them, Ophelia didn't know what to say. In the past few years, she was never as successful or happy as she was now. Today, her mood was completely different. Was this feeling the satisfaction of proving her strength? Jane was also excited. Oh, we did it! We really did. Ophelia hugged Jane happily. The smiles on their faces were bright, as if they'd never smiled like this before. Ophelia wanted to thank Xavier even more now. He truly appeared like a god to her, pulling her out of the divorce and her previous company. In the future, when she stood in front of others, she would be Ophelia and would no longer be associated with her ex, Damon. Nick shook hands with the organizers and expressed his gratitude. Robert wasn't surprised by this result, but he still felt uncomfortable. They lost. And furthermore, they had lost to a small company that had yet to gain a foothold in New York. Andrew couldn't stay any longer. He said angrily, Dad, let's go first. All right. Robert nodded. Before the reporter surrounded him, he had to hurry and escape. Xavier saw Robert and Andrew leave. Xavier, they left, Aiden said. John, who was standing at the side, smiled. Escaping with their tail between their legs, he said. Xavier stood up. Let's go back first. Aren't you going to wait for her to return? Aiden said. Xavier shook his head. I'll wait for her at home. He had prepared a surprise for Ophelia. Xavier left the building with Aiden and John. Nick, along with Ophelia and Jane, gave an interview to the media. Mr. Nick, what do you think about this bid? One of the reporters asked. 
Joining the bidding with Ophelia helped me understand quite a bit of the intricacy of negotiation. Then, do you have anything more to say to the Hoffmans? I can only do my best. Regardless of success or failure, I am satisfied. May I ask why you sent two women to take the lead this time? Nick had been dealing with such statements the entire time. Your question seems to be a little bit sexist, don't you think? Well, why did you choose them? Is it really because of their abilities, or... Ophelia and Jane understood the reporter's intention. Nick continued to laugh. Ability is, of course, the most important thing. Both of them have proven their abilities are more important than their looks. Do you know who they are? Nick's mouth twitched. After asking enough questions, they finally got to this. What's wrong with them? You've just come back. Maybe that's why you're not clear about their identities. Miss Ophelia was the former daughter-in-law of Robert Hoffman. She got divorced recently. Nick glanced at Ophelia and Jane. You mean that as a problem? Didn't you worry about... Nick suddenly laughed. What century are we in? Is divorce a capital offense? Nick looked at the female reporter, who lowered her head. They worked overtime to come up with this proposal. I don't think I picked the wrong person. Hearing Nick's words, Ophelia and Jane became a lot more comfortable. If only there were more people as reasonable as Nick. This is really touching, the reporter said. Nick smiled. Everyone has their own bottom line and their own privacy. Why must these be used to hurt each other? You seem to have some experience as well, another reporter asked. Yes, Nick answered. My past was also terrible. At that time, I was fortunate enough to meet someone who changed my life. These were all things I learned from him. Ophelia was a bit lost in thought when she heard Nick's words. Was the person Nick referring to William? Nick's words made people fall into deep thought. Someone interjected. Mr. Nick, this person is... He's my closest support system, Nick replied. Miss Ophelia, why don't you say a few words? A reporter turned to her. Ophelia smiled. I would also like to thank my support system. Mr. Nick, this time you're representing Sequoia, which was clinched victory at the first get-go. What is in store for you now? Nick smiled mysteriously. I will tell everyone when the time is right. Thank you so much for today. Nick hurriedly left with Ophelia and Jane, not leaving anything behind. However, they unexpectedly became the hottest topic of discussion in the city. The media called them inspirational because of Nick's speech. He suddenly became a beacon of support, an ally for women. If only every man understood women like Nick. Back at the office, Nick's assistant said that a lot of journalists wanted to come over to do a detailed interview. Nick raised his eyebrows and immediately refused. We can't give away so much all at once. Otherwise, they'll find something or the other to tear us down. When Ophelia heard this, she couldn't help but admire him. Mr. Nick, I think you're right to refuse to do interviews. I didn't say that, Nick answered. Then who did? She asked. Your husband said so. He has a lot to say. I'll tell you more when I have time. Ophelia's heart skipped a beat when she heard Nick's words. So it was Xavier. Ophelia admired him in her heart for some reason. But at the same time... She was more curious about the situation. There seemed to be a great deal on him to discover. Right then, I have some good news for you, Nick said, interrupting her thoughts. What good news? Nick read out the message. They were going to get some bonuses. Ophelia seemed very excited to receive such praise. What's the reward? She asked excitedly. Money, Nick said proudly. To be honest, Ophelia really didn't expect a big shot like William to be like this. Oh, I almost forgot to mention one thing. Nick looked at Ophelia. On the day of the contract signing, he might appear. Ophelia was dumbfounded. Was Nick really going to be there? Did that mean she could meet him? After seeing Ophelia's expression, Jane also smiled. It seemed like Ophelia didn't know Xavier's identity. After John helped her win the lawsuit, she personally called Xavier to say thank you. At that time, Xavier had wanted to talk to John. It was only later when John told her that Xavier was the head of Sequoia. However, she didn't know the reason Xavier hid his identity from Ophelia. It could be said that Xavier wanted to tell her personally. All she had to do was her job. Since they had won the bid, Nick, Ophelia, and Jane began work on a new project. While Nick was making his report, he received a call from Ella. Congratulations, Nick. Nick really had a headache when he received her call, but he had kept his mouth shut. They were related, even if distantly. Thank you, Ella. Pretty women make 
makes for pretty victories, don't they? Ella smirked. They are great at their jobs, if that's what you mean. You see the women I saw last time? Yes, Luke replied. Well, don't you think their reputation might... Ella, I've already publicly explained these things to you today. Nick immediately interrupted. Yes, their image will affect it crazy. This is not something you should care about, Nick answered. Watch. Nick hung up the phone. He couldn't help but sigh. That woman knew how to restrain herself. Xavier wouldn't be treating her like this. Emily swept off all the cosmetics on the table to the ground. She tightened her grip. Ophelia, I certainly won't lose to you. I'll make you take this fall. Her mother immediately came inside. Em, what's wrong with you? Um, can't lose to Ophelia, Emily said angrily. You haven't completely recovered yet. Please don't get angry. Ruth tried to calm her down. Mom, I can't rest now. Ruth frowned. Of course she knew. However, Emily had not fully recovered yet. At this moment, Richard returned from the company, walking into the house full of anger. Dad's back, Emily said, looking at her father in anger. Richard looked at Emily's pale face. You're not fully recovered yet. Why did you come out? Dad, I want to go back to work as soon as possible. Richard sat down on the sofa. Because of Ophelia? Dad, please promise me. Emily couldn't wait any longer. She didn't want to lose to Ophelia every time. Richard sighed. You should rest for a few more days. Don't force yourself. Dad, Ophelia took the original plan for Sequoia. She wants to get revenge. Richard's expression changed. Was this the reason she was angry? Everyone in the Hoffman family had their own thoughts. Robert was silent, but he was happy. He had not been wrong about Ophelia. This time around, she had proven her strength. He called Ophelia in the afternoon and wanted to ask her for dinner. He didn't expect that she would directly reject him like that. He still felt angry thinking about it. Helen frowned, but didn't say anything. Her thoughts were all on Nick. Was this the real Nick or the fake Nick? Xavier didn't appear today. What does this mean? Andrew was unconvinced. Ophelia had used Koya Turner to kick out his plot. He had to think of a way to resolve this matter. Damon looked down at his phone. Only after he was called home did he know what had happened. Looking at the confident Ophelia in the video, he smiled wistfully. After she left him, she seemed to be doing well. Jane's words rang loudly in his ears. Madeline looked left and right. She had seen the press interviews in the afternoon. Dad, would you say something? Andrew finally broke the silence. Robert glanced at Andrew. What do you want me to say? What do you think? Andrew replied. I think you should step out and find Ophelia. Robert addressed Damon. Damon sighed when he heard this. Ophelia is also unwilling to see me now. Just do your job. Damon tightened his hand into a fist. His father always treated him like this. Seeing Robert's expression, Helen was shocked. His eyes were terrifying. Robert couldn't hold it in anymore. This kind of person who always pretended to be docile would definitely lose their reason once he was angered. Don't be angry, she tried to intervene, looking at her husband. Robert turned around and glanced at Helen. I'm not angry. Helen gently patted Robert's back. Although Ophelia won this time, we won't take defeat just like that. It was rare to hear Helen say something like this. But Robert finally relaxed at her words. I'm fine. Helen looked at the others. All right, everyone back to your work. Andrew waited until everyone else had left. Mom, I really can't accept time. You can't be rash. Xavier hasn't revealed his trump card. We can't panic yet. Helen analyzed. If he were to be part of our family, I would never call him uncle, Andrew exclaimed, tightening his hand into a fist. Madeline overheard their conversation. A lot of questions popped up in her head. No, she thought. She must tell this to Damon. It seemed like Mom, Dad, and Andrew all knew what happened. When Madeline went to find Damon, she had found that he was already asleep. It was already eight in the evening when Ophelia returned home by herself. And Xavier was not back. Seeing the lights were off at home, Ophelia felt a little down. She really wanted to share what happened today with him. Xavier looked down from the staircase and saw Ophelia standing in the doorway. He called her on the phone and hid from her sight. 
Hi, darling. Why aren't you coming in? He spoke into the phone. Ophelia reacted as soon as she heard the sound. Are you here? She reached over and turned on the lights, walking into the living room. She saw it was filled with roses of all colors. Her face flushed and her eyes glittered with excitement. She bent down and randomly picked up one flower. Did you get all of these? She asked him on the phone. Yes, Xavier replied, still hiding. Ophelia, unable to find a place to sit, sat on the ground. There's a lot of roses here. Xavier smiled. Do you like it? Ophelia looked at the blue rose in her hand. I really like them. To celebrate your success today. Ophelia looked at the flower shyly. Did you miss me? Xavier asked with a smile. I did. Very much. I have a lot of things I want to say to you in person. Is that so? Xavier's mood had improved. Yes. Unbeknownst to her, Xavier had already walked down and stood behind Ophelia. Turn around. Ophelia turned around and saw Xavier standing behind her with a smile. She stood up. Xavier opened his arms and hugged Ophelia as he whispered into her ear. I'm back. Xavier hugged Ophelia, but neither of them said anything. They embraced each other quietly. Her eyes were filled with happiness. She raised her head and looked at Xavier silently. Xavier blinked lightly. Is something wrong? I just want to look at you, Ophelia said with a smile. Xavier put his arms around Ophelia's waist. Have I changed? Yes. A radiant smile appeared on Ophelia's face. Xavier let go of Ophelia. What are you thinking? Ophelia quickly shook her head. Nothing. You're not a good liar. You know that, right? Ophelia bit her lip. Why was he able to see through her every time? Xavier noticed that Ophelia seemed to have something on her mind. It seemed like it was hard for her to say anything about this. What's wrong? How many women have you been with before me? Xavier was surprised at her question. Why do you ask? I mean, look at you. You're smart, handsome, kind. There must be a lot of people chasing you. Xavier put his head against hers. Before she could react, Xavier rubbed his forehead against hers softly. I only have you. This time, Ophelia heard it clearly. Her heart was beating rapidly, and she seemed to have lost control of it. Do you think we'll always be this happy? Ophelia asked. Xavier nuzzled her head. Yes. Always. Ophelia did not grasp the meaning behind Xavier's words. Xavier closed his eyes. His chin was resting on Ophelia's forehead, but he heard her say something. Do you know what a blue rose represents? Ophelia remembered that she had seen another blue flower. There were very few of these blue roses, so what did they represent? The two of them tossed and turned for the better part of the night before finally falling asleep. The sky still brightened up very quickly. Ophelia closed her eyes again as the light was too bright. She rolled over and found it empty. Suddenly, she instantly opened her eyes again. Xavier was nowhere to be found. Was she dreaming last night? Dreaming that he was back? Dreaming they were all over each other? Ophelia sat up. She was completely naked. Xavier had come back. Ophelia smiled. Just as she was about to get out of bed, the door to the room was pushed open. Xavier? Ophelia called out. But when she looked up, it was not Xavier, but a middle-aged woman. Ophelia quickly pulled the blanket over herself. Uh, you? Good morning, Mrs. Woods, the middle-aged woman said. My name is Liza. Ophelia nodded when she heard me. Um, hello. You're going to get up? Yeah, I'll, um, get up. Liza smiled. She knew that Ophelia was not used to this, so she put down the flowers in her hand. Ophelia nodded. Her gaze fell on the vase of roses, especially the three blue ones. She remembered what she had asked Xavier last night. Do you know what the blue rose represents? Ophelia lifted the quilt, put on her pajamas, and walked up to the vase. She reached out her finger and touched the blue petals. She wanted to know more about what it represented. Ophelia started to read about it seriously. It was a reference to a poem, a single blue witch's flowery word. Adherence is a promise in the cycle of life. 
How can one have a gentle love? After she had finished reading, Ophelia raised her head again to look at the three blue roses in the vase. All of Xavier's thoughts were placed here. She felt especially lucky, because she found him. If it was really fate, then she believed in it. Regardless of anything in the future, she still wanted to walk side by side with him. After Ophelia washed up, she walked out of the room and saw Liza cleaning up. Where is Xavier? Ophelia looked around. She didn't see him. He went out on some business. He said he would be back late. Ophelia was a little disappointed. She had finally gotten a day's rest, but Xavier had left early in the morning. Do you want breakfast? Um, sure. Ophelia nodded. She was really tired after yesterday. Ophelia walked into the living room and sat down. The roses from the night before had already been cleaned up, and the remaining portion of the roses were moved already. Breakfast? Okay. Ophelia immediately moved to the dining room. Here you are. Hot pancakes. When Ophelia saw Liza bring out the pancakes, she suddenly remembered that her mother used to make them for her when she was young. It had been many years since she'd had them, so she felt a little sad. Ophelia nodded and smiled at her. Thank you. Liza also smiled and nodded. There's no need to be so polite. Ophelia sat down and began to eat her breakfast. These are delicious. Yes, I'm glad you like them. Actually, I don't do anything fancy, so... That's good enough, Ophelia smiled. I don't know how to cook anything, actually. If you don't mind, I can teach you, Liza said. Really? Really. Ophelia immediately put down her spoon when she heard the sound of a car coming from outside the door. When she opened the door, she saw Nathan get out of the car. He seemed to be startled by Ophelia's action of opening the door. Oh, hello. Ophelia stretched her neck, hoping to see Xavier in the next second. Is something wrong? Nathan asked. Where's Xavier? He's not with me. Ophelia gave a disappointed, oh, before turning and entering the house. Xavier and Nick met in the conference room, Sequoia turning. In two days, we'll officially sign the contract, Nick said. Xavier nodded. All right, you handle the relevant work. There's been a lot of media people wanting to interview Ophelia and Jane these two days, Nick suggested. Xavier supported his chin with his hand. What do you think? I said I didn't think it was necessary, Nick answered. Reporters these days are especially good at digging up holes. I'm worried the both of them might not be able to handle it. Well, they should actually learn how to. This is a form of training for them. Learning to protect themselves is the most important thing. Relying on others to protect them isn't the long-term solution. Nick thought about it and agreed. Then I'll choose someone reliable to come and interview them. Xavier nodded. I'll come home when the contract is signed in two days. Nick was a little surprised by Xavier's decision. You've decided to come to the front of the stage from behind the scenes? I'd say it's about time, Xavier answered. Nick nodded. Okay. I'll prepare accordingly. Xavier looked at the time. You go and make the arrangements. I'll go back first. Nick suddenly couldn't help but tease him. You miss your wife? Xavier raised his eyelids. Do you not believe me? It's hard to believe, Nick admitted. This position isn't something that an ordinary person can sit on. Can Ophelia really live in the position of being Xavier's wife? It was already noon when Xavier returned to his villa. He saw Liza the moment he entered the door. Sure, you're back. Xavier nodded. Where's Ophelia? Liza smiled back at him. She is upstairs. I think she's taking a call at the moment. After Xavier heard this, he went upstairs. The moment he entered through the door, he heard her talking on the phone. She sounded happy and relaxed, so it seemed to be a call from someone she knew. Xavier saw Ophelia curled up in a chair on the balcony. He didn't bother her, and instead turned around to change his clothes. When Xavier was about to go wash his face, he heard Ophelia's voice as he passed by the balcony. Eric, when are you coming back? Hearing this name, Xavier stopped. He realized he had heard this name before. Eric, the son of the mayor. He was studying medicine abroad for two years. It was obvious they had a good relationship. Really? Oh, you finally back! Ophelia exclaimed. Then she also saw Xavier, who was standing beside the balcony door. She waved at him, and then continued to talk to Eric. Okay, then we'll meet again, maybe for dinner or something. All right, see you. After the call ended, Ophelia immediately opened the door of the balcony. Xavier, you're back. 
So who were you talking to? One of my seniors from college, Ophelia answered. He's always taken good care of me. Xavier pondered. A senior? When Ophelia saw Xavier's expressionless face, she immediately explained. Xavier, don't misunderstand me. He's a really good friend to me. He's been very helpful. Seeing that Ophelia had started to panic, Xavier reached out and held her hand. Of course, I believe you. Don't worry about it. Ophelia heaved a sigh of relief upon hearing his words. Her relationship with Eric was very open. They were good friends. At that time, Damon was the only one who didn't believe her, and had always been suspicious of their bond. Ophelia shook her head. Why did she have to think of him again? What's wrong? Ophelia looked at Xavier and smiled. Nothing. It's fine. The senior of yours is... Oh, his name is Eric. He's my senior from college. He got a scholarship to study medicine. He just told me his studies are over, and he'll be back in a few days. Ophelia smiled. Hearing Ophelia's words, Xavier said, You seem very happy. Mm-hmm. He's a good person, and also we haven't seen each other for a long time, Ophelia said. Xavier raised his eyebrows. Okay, then. Seems like you're more excited about this friend coming home instead of me. Ophelia was stunned. She didn't know what she said wrong, but Xavier had a very serious expression on his face. He let go of Ophelia's hand, turned around, and walked into the bathroom to wash his face. She didn't understand why Xavier would suddenly act like this. Had she really said something wrong just now? After Xavier finished his lunch, he started working in the study room. Ophelia sat alone on the sofa, watching TV. When it was dinner time, Xavier came out of his study. As he walked into the living room, he saw Ophelia sleeping on the sofa with her iPad in her arms. He walked over and picked her up. She didn't even come to talk to him all afternoon. Liza saw Xavier carrying Ophelia upstairs and hollered after him. What about dinner? I'll eat later. Um, okay. Xavier carried Ophelia into the room. It seemed she was really tired, so she slept soundly. After pulling up Ophelia's blanket, Xavier sat on the side of the bed and looked at her. Did she really not see he was jealous? Xavier was about to stand up when he heard Ophelia's voice. Xavier, there's really nothing going on between me and her. He thought Ophelia had woken up, but when he saw that her eyes were still closed, he realized she was just talking in her sleep. Xavier touched Ophelia's face and smiled. The developers announced that the Sequoia Turner contract would be signed at five seasons the next day at 9 a.m. People were surprised. There was a public signing ceremony? This had probably never happened before. At the same time, there were rumors that the signing ceremony was held because of Sequoia's mysterious boss, who would appear at the scene. The pressure was high in Andrew's office. Mr. Hoffman, the deputy CEO, is here, the assistant came in and said. After he heard this, he stopped what he was doing. Why was Damon here? Let him in. Damon walked in energetically. I am here to work, my man, Damon answered. Andrew looked at Damon. Did you just wake up? You want to work? Yes, I want to work. Andrew obviously didn't want Damon to come back. He had finally gotten himself into a position of power. If Damon came back now, it would be over. That and the fact that Damon was smarter than him were enough to push him out of his seat. If it wasn't for the fact that he was the eldest grandson, the old man would have definitely made Damon the director. The old man said that she wanted to rest for a while, Andrew said. I mean, dude, I've rested enough, but you know what? I can talk to the old man. Andrew's current focus was on tomorrow's signing ceremony. He didn't have the energy to care about this right now. Damon walked to Robert's office and knocked on the door. Come in. Damon pushed open the door. Grandpa? Damon. Elijah looked up and saw Damon standing at the door and recoiled in surprise. Damon stood at the door and didn't dare go in. Seeing his hesitation, his grandfather put down the documents in his hands and took off his reading glasses. Come in, his grandfather said. Damon's eyes suddenly lit up when he heard his words. 
He had thought his grandfather didn't want to see him, so he hesitated. Sit down. Damon didn't sit down. He just stood there awkwardly. Do you want me to always look up at you like this? I am an old man, you know. He winked and extended his hand. Damon felt very uncomfortable when he heard this. I'm really sorry I messed up, but I promise I'm gonna work hard. I really am. He smiled. Damon, you really did screw up this time. You have to rein yourself in from now on, do you understand? Definitely. You got it, Damon immediately said. His grandfather felt comforted. That's Damon, you've been smart and serious since you were a kid. I don't want you to waste your talent. Damon felt uneasy at hearing this. It sounded like his grandfather was giving a speech before he died. Gramps, I... Although I am old, I am not stupid. Damon had been very smart since he was young. He was academically inclined, quick on his feet, and had incredible business acumen. This was nurtured. He would have gone very far. He couldn't be wrong about this. And more importantly, Damon was more steady, calm, and composed than Andrew. I hope that you can learn from this. Arrogance and impatience will be the death of you. I know, I know. You're absolutely right. His grandfather nodded in satisfaction. Then, um, about the matter of me coming back to work, Damon asked tentatively. He nodded. Sure, come back to work tomorrow. Damon was shocked. He had never expected that Gramps would ask him to come back to work. I, I won't let you down this time. He nodded. Then, almost as if an afterthought, he looked at Damon and said, She returned to work related to Ophelia. Damon didn't answer and instead looked away. His grandfather once thought it would be a good thing for him to be with Ophelia. Now he realized they weren't suitable. She and Xavier, on the other hand, seemed to be perfect for each other. If it wasn't for Damon, who couldn't let go of his pride, the relationship between them would have been great. In terms of handling relationships, Damon really needed work. He had never taken his feelings seriously, and he still didn't know what his heart was. He had hoped this incident would teach him a lesson. Now his grandfather actually had his own selfish motives. When he saw Ophelia and Xavier interact that day, he knew they had something special, an intimate relationship. His grandfather knew that after mistreating him for 30 years, Xavier should hate him. At least he had his mother with him. He inadvertently let out a sigh. Damon thought his grandfather was regretting his divorce from Ophelia, so he lowered his head. I shouldn't have divorced Ophelia without telling you. What's done is done, Damon. Don't think about it too much. Maybe you and Ophelia weren't meant to be. Now, I want you to focus on your work and prove yourself. I promise you, I'll work hard, Damon answered. He would prove himself. If Ophelia could do it, then so could he. His grandfather nodded. All right, I'm a little tired today, so I want to go home and rest. Damon walked him to the elevator and coincidentally bumped into Robert, who had just returned to the office. Dad, you're going back? Robert felt it was a bit strange when he saw them walking towards them. Mr. Hoffman nodded. Yes, I'm going back. Two of them walked into the elevator after Damon dropped him off at his car. Robert immediately rushed to Andrew's side. Andrew! Andrew looked at the tired-looking Robert and said, Dad, what's wrong? Damon came to the office? Andrew nodded. He said he wanted to come back to work. What's wrong? Robert wasn't very optimistic. He didn't seem like that from the looks of it. At this time, he really couldn't afford to cause any trouble. He immediately took out a document from his bag. Koya has paid the deposit on the plot. Just then, Damon walked in and saw the signature on the photocopy. Who exactly is this William? he asked. This man would become their greatest rival in the city. Robert sat down at the table. He had a nagging feeling that there was impending doom. Andrew was unhappy as he looked at his father's helpless look. Dad, can't you find out anything about this William guy? No, I can't. He's a very mysterious person. Robert shook his head. Perhaps in the future, their company would be sidelined by the Sequoia Corporation. This was impossible. He had spent a lot of effort climbing to this position. He couldn't afford to make any mistakes. Dad, I heard William will be at the signing tomorrow. Robert's eyes flashed. Signing? 
Tomorrow? I heard some news, Andrew answered. It should be possible. If that's the case, then we need to be there. Andrew nodded. He really wanted to see who this William was. The next morning, the alarm clock on her cell phone rang loudly. Ophelia reached out to press it off. Do you want to get up? Xavier's voice sounded near her. Ophelia turned around and glanced at Xavier. Uh, no, but today's the signing ceremony. I don't need to go to this scene. Follow-up work's gonna have to begin. Xavier pinched Ophelia's nose. You really like work, don't you? Yes, Ophelia laughed. Xavier chuckled. I'll get up too, then. If you have nothing else to do, you can just sleep in. If you're not here, how am I supposed to sleep? Xavier said. I'd still like to sleep with you in my arms. Ophelia was immediately reminded of what they'd been doing the whole night, and she blushed furiously. See, Xavier seemed to have been unrestrained these days, doing it over and over again. She'd never expected herself to be like this. What are you thinking about? Xavier asked. Ophelia came back to her senses and immediately saw Xavier's face. It's an all-knowing grin on his mug. I... Um... You what? Xavier chuckled. He suppressed his smile when he saw her face. Ophelia shook her head. Just when she was about to get up, Xavier grabbed her and kissed her. After they kissed passionately, Ophelia ran to the bathroom, dazed and happy. Once Ophelia had left for work, Aiden came to pick up Xavier. Mr. Woods, should we go? Xavier nodded and tightened his tie as he walked. Xavier was wearing a dark blue suit and seemed different. Nick and John arrived at the scene early in the morning, and both of them were dressed very formally today. After all, Xavier was going to be there. They couldn't be careless. Xavier, are you really planning on showing up today? Asked John. Yes. What's so serious? I mean, it's not fun at all, John complained. He had thought Xavier would continue to want to play hide-and-seek. Nick smiled. Why do I feel like he's still playing a game today? Not long after... The developers and organizers all came. This time, there were a lot of people, probably because they heard about the news and wanted to see the mysterious head that was rumored to be Sequoia. Nick, the CEO William hasn't arrived yet, someone asked. Nick smiled. The whereabouts of my CEO is uncertain. I'm not even sure if he'll come. You really know how to joke around. I'm telling the truth, Nick said seriously. Someone came to remind them it was time to sign the contract and ask them to come. Nick and John followed the group into the venue. Not long after, there was a commotion at the door. Everyone thought that the legendary Sequoia CEO had arrived. In the end, everyone was eagerly waiting, and some even stood up. Just when everyone was in high spirits, Robert and Andrew walked in. Some of the waiting people sighed in regret. It turned out this was the person they were waiting for. This cold treatment angered Andrew. The group of people had always been faithful to their company. They were all showing their true colors. Robert pulled at Andrew, reminding him to pay attention to the atmosphere of the occasion. After all, there were a lot of people here. The two of them directly walked in front of Nick. We're here to congratulate you, Andrew said. Huh, you're too kind. This is our first time here, so I hope you can give us some pointers for the future. Nick smiled. You can't be this serious. Right now, everything is about winning. Nick nodded. It turned out that he was here to warn him. He seemed polite on the face, yet in his heart, he despised this father and son duo. Andrew also saw John, who was standing on the side. Why are you here? John nodded. I came over here to work. Robert was puzzled and quickly asked Andrew what was going on. After learning the truth, Robert also looked back at John in shock. This is... Nick reacted quickly. I forgot to introduce him. This is our headquarters legal advisor and also the company's vice president, John. Andrew felt like he was slapped in the face. Person who didn't look very serious was the vice president of Sequoia. John smiled at Andrew, and his eyes dared him to say something provocative. John, let's sit down. The signing ceremony started on time, and Nick signed the contract between the two parties as the person in charge. Following that, both sides began to take photos. Where they were sitting, the father-son duo was caught up in too many questions. If John's the vice president of Sequoia, why is he acting as Ophelia's equity representative? While they were at a loss over what to do, two people walked into the venue. 
Who are those two? Robert and Andrew turned around at the same time when they heard the sound. When they saw who it was, their faces opened in shock. No, it can't be. The person who just walked in was the CEO of Sequoia. Everyone had been waiting with anticipation for a long time. The president's aura and image immediately caused everyone to hold their breath. He was wearing a fitted suit and emanated an aura of power. You really know how to choose a time. He deliberately lowered his voice while speaking to Xavier. What if is this not good? Xavier asked. Of course. Nick understood that Xavier was telling the others that the main character would always be the last one to appear. Xavier looked at John and nodded. Mr. Xavier? John's attitude was very serious, much different from his usual appearance. Aiden followed behind Xavier. He was always paying attention to his surroundings. At this moment, there were already many people who wanted to surround him and try to get close to the president of Sequoia. This is the CEO of Sequoia, people's expressions seemed to say. Nick and John stood by Xavier's side like detectors. Behind them stood Aiden, who had a serious expression on his face. Mr. Nick, why don't you introduce us? Yes, this is our boss, Nick said with a smile. William. Xavier slightly nodded towards the others politely, but didn't say anything. Is there anything Mr. William wants to tell us today? Nick asked Xavier. Thank you, everyone. This bid is very important to Sequoia, so I thank my partners for their hard work. Xavier's beautiful voice and magnetism immediately made all the women present infatuated with him. This man was too perfect. Will Mr. Williams stay in New York this time? Someone asked. Xavier shook his head, trying to answer the question. Does Mr. William have a girlfriend? The question made everyone quiet down. The room waited in anticipation for his answer. Nick and John also looked like they were watching a soap opera. Xavier remained silent. However, from his expression, it seemed he was in a good mood. I'm married. As soon as these words were spoken, the hearts of many young girls broke. This male Adonis had long been someone else's. After he finished speaking, Xavier seemed to have noticed the father-son duo who stood at the furthest corner of the crowd. Both Robert and Andrew were in a daze. From the moment Xavier came in, they felt like they were dreaming. Xavier was the mysterious CEO of Sequoia. They could still recognize him, though he wasn't in his truest form today. The person standing in front of them was, no doubt, Xavier. What should we do now? Andrew felt that Xavier was staring at him intentionally. Let's go back now, Robert answered. Just when the two were about to leave, the crowd in front suddenly parted and Xavier walked towards them. Andrew was about to speak, but was held back by Robert, who signaled him not to be impulsive. Hello, the two of you. Hello, Robert said, struggling to keep a calm exterior. Xavier said a few words to John in a low voice, then looked at Robert with a smile. I'd really like to have dinner with the both of you. In the future, is there maybe a chance of that happening? Xavier had always been polite. On the contrary, Andrew was arrogant, the dignified CEO had greeted him so politely that he was frowning and looking away. Robert couldn't help but admire Xavier's abilities. Sure, Robert replied curtly. Xavier nodded and left, followed by Nick and John. Since the show was over, there was no need to stay any longer. Aiden coldly glanced at Robert and Andrew before leaving. After getting in the car, Aiden asked, Where are we going? Office, Xavier answered. He wanted to see Ophelia. By now, she should already know his identity. How would she react? All right. However, Ophelia didn't watch the live broadcast at all. Jane had been discussing future arrangements in the meeting room. She only stopped when Nick's assistant ran in excitedly with her phone. So your husband is our main man. Ophelia was confused when she heard that. What? Xavier's assistant handed the phone to Ophelia. This handsome guy came to our office last time. Ophelia took the cell phone and saw the title of the video, The Mysterious Sequoia CEO's Surprise Show. Ophelia became nervous when she saw the title. Opening the video, her expression changed from nervous 
shock. Although he was wearing sunglasses, Ophelia would still recognize him. Even she was sure it was Xavier. But why was he there? You said this is our CEO? The assistant quickly nodded. That's right. Didn't Vio say so? Ophelia still found it hard to accept that Xavier was Sequoia's CEO. So he had been hiding his identity from her. But why? Why did he do that? Ophelia! The familiar voice made Ophelia turn around slowly. Xavier was standing at the door of the meeting room. He was the CEO of Sequoia. Xavier! Xavier was William. She couldn't believe it. What was going on? Xavier stood at the door of the meeting room and looked at Ophelia's blank expression. He felt as if she had been struck in the heart. What did she mean by this? Jane, could you give us a moment? Jane put down her work and walked out after hearing Xavier's words. He quickly locked the meeting room and walked towards Ophelia. When she saw him walk over, she instinctively took a few steps back. Seeing Ophelia move away, Xavier frowned. Did she want to distance herself now? What happened? Ophelia's eyes were filled with panic, but she still tried her best to remain calm. She had also thought about Xavier's identity. Seriously, she had thought about it a lot. However, she never expected him to be this, the boss of a multi-million dollar company, and the person she respected the most. She needed to calm down now. Ophelia helped herself to a chair and took a deep breath. Ophelia, I... Wait a moment. Ophelia felt she was a mess, unable to digest everything that had happened in front of her. Xavier frowned. He didn't listen to Ophelia's words. Instead, he walked over and pulled her up from the chair. Before Ophelia could say anything, she was already in his arms. She was just about to struggle, but Xavier whispered in her ear, There are a lot of people watching outside. Ophelia peeked outside the room and saw that everyone was watching them. She buried her head in Xavier's shoulder and sighed. Xavier turned around and looked at Nick. Nick nodded, and then walked over to the conference room and opened the shutter switch. He turned around and glanced at the others. Don't you have work to do? Everyone immediately scampered off to their cubicles as they heard Nick's stern tone. In the meeting room, Xavier hugged Ophelia. All right, no one will bother us now. Ophelia raised her head. What do you want to say? She said uneasily. Ophelia, I won't allow you to turn away from me. This was the first time Xavier had used such a tough tone with her. She was stunned. Xavier, her husband, who had always been kind and considerate to her, also had this side to him. Oh, Ophelia, everything that happened between you and me is real. Please don't doubt it. Ophelia looked at Xavier. He was still the same as usual. But had it really not changed? In a moment, her whole perception of him had flipped upside down. Which one is the real you? Ophelia found herself confused. In front of you, I've always been myself, Xavier answered. When Ophelia heard this, she sighed in relief. The conflict between them had disappeared. What Xavier said was right. He never hurt her, and on the contrary, he was helping her all the time. Wasn't this enough? Was there really a need to be conflicted over things? She reached out and touched his face. What happened today is too shocking for me to handle. Xavier sighed. If I could, I'd rather you never know. You know you have your own difficulties. It's all right. Inhale. Xavier hugged Ophelia tightly. He suddenly felt that he couldn't leave her anymore. She seemed to have calmed down, but she still needed to be clear about something. To you, I'm just Xavier, your husband. Ophelia raised her head and looked at Xavier. She didn't know why. She trusted him. Who told her to fall in love with him? Why did you choose me? Why did you marry me? Ophelia asked, the uncertainty palpable in her voice. Xavier smiled faintly. You're my wife. That's enough. Ophelia knew that he was trying to comfort her. There would be more tests between them, and the road ahead would be difficult. I will always be with you, Xavier continued. Sensing Xavier's feelings for her, Ophelia wanted to be strong for him, for once, regardless of the outcome. After a kiss, 
and Xavier pressed his forehead against Ophelia's. After a while, he let go of her and said, Take the day off today. Why? Just listen to me. Just, uh, just go home. Xavier's voice was hoarse. Ophelia was stunned and blinked rapidly. Go home? But why? Without waiting for Ophelia to think, Xavier pulled her hand and ran out of the meeting room. Seeing this, Aiden also quickly followed. Xavier's expression was not normal. Could it be that Ophelia hadn't accepted it? Nick and John looked at each other in concern. Aiden followed him to the parking lot. Xavier, go back! Ophelia was stunned. What was going on? Aiden glanced at Ophelia, and when he saw her exposed neck, he couldn't help but get a little flush. Xavier covered their tightly clasped hands. He took Ophelia into his arms and said in a hoarse voice that only the two of them could hear, I want you all to myself. Ophelia's face reddened, and she buried her face on his shoulder. Back at the villa, Xavier pulled Ophelia directly into the room. As soon as they entered, he pressed her against the door and kissed her urgently. Ophelia hugged Xavier's waist. Otherwise, she worried that her legs might give out. This time, it was as if the two of them had been set on fire. Almost every inch of the room was destroyed when they were done. After what seemed like a long time, Ophelia gasped and leaned on Xavier's shoulder. Xavier, I really can't. Xavier smiled and hugged her. Then he carried her into the bathtub. The warm hot water felt really comfortable. Ophelia closed her eyes and enjoyed herself. He found that this woman had actually fallen asleep. He took a towel to help wipe her dry, then carried her to the bed. Leaning over to kiss Ophelia on the forehead, he said, Go to sleep. Then he went to the wardrobe and changed his clothes. He had other things to take care of, so he opened the door quietly and went out. Meanwhile, in the control center next door, seeing Xavier walk in, Aiden and Nick stood up. Xavier! Yes, Xavier responded. Get me Jason. Aiden nodded and immediately called up Jason. While Xavier and Jason were researching countermeasures, the Hoffmans were pacing around worriedly. Andrew had come back angry. He was angry at the singing venue. However, when he returned to the company and saw Damon had already returned to work, he became even angrier. He felt he was being played by his grandpa, who had let Damon return to the company so easily. All his efforts had been in vain. Seeing Andrew come back, Helen also rushed over to check out the situation. Andrew, this is CEO on TV, Xavier, Helen asked. Although he was wearing sunglasses, anyone who knew Xavier could tell that it was him. However, they didn't expect him to be the mysterious CEO of Sequoia. This was bad news for them. It's him, Andrew nodded. Helen frowned. This was why she'd said that they have to be careful. This was a big surprise. Mom, what should we do now? Helen was confused as well. What was Xavier trying to pull? I'll think about it later. Andrew angrily slapped down on the sofa. Now this Xavier is going against us everywhere. Helen quickly covered Andrew's mouth. Lower your voice. Madeline was hiding at the foot of the stairs. This time, she could finally hear the whole story clearly. This was explosive news. Xavier is CEO of Sequoia? Will you? Oh my god! Madeline carefully walked back to her room. She didn't comprehend this fully. Her computer still had the video related to Xavier. Where had she seen this man before? Her heart skipped a beat as she slapped her thigh. This the same man who came to take Ophelia away from home the last time? This seemed really close. What's going on now? Madeline scratched her head. N no, she had to find out. This was chaotic. That night, Madeline went to Damon's room. She saw that he was still working. Damon? Damon stopped and looked up to see Madeline's worried face. Is something wrong? Um, am I disturbing you? Madeline was the kind of person who couldn't hide what she felt. She desperately needed someone to talk to. Otherwise, she wasn't going to be able to sleep. No, it's fine. W what's the matter? You, um, know about Xavier? Who is that? 
Of course, Damon wasn't sure. He always thought that Xavier was Nick. Madeline frowned. Seemed like he didn't know squat. Maddie? Damon looked quite conflicting. Going on? I, um, overheard something important today, Madeline whispered. This Xavier seems to be Grandpa's son, which means... When Damon heard this, his eyes opened wide. What did you just say? It's a big secret. Madeline became serious. All of them know except you and me. If I hadn't overheard it today, the two of us would have been completely in the dark. Xavier. Damon repeated the name. Madeline nodded her head vigorously. This was why everyone was acting so weird. Parents were worried that Grandpa's property would be left to Xavier. That's what's with all the tension. When Damon heard this, he quickly said, Don't talk nonsense. Madeline was taken aback, but restrained herself. I uh, understand. We need to focus on our company work. This is just going to distract us all. Um, one more thing. You think Xavier is the guy who's with Ophelia right now? What did you say? Damon was even more shocked. Is it true? Yes. Madeline nodded affirmatively. It was him. Mom knows all about him. If we want to find out, we just have to ask Mom. Damon frowned. Now that she thought about it, their strange actions that day seem to make sense now. Xavier is a secret that his family has always been unwilling to reveal. So he had finally come back. Could it be that he was with Ophelia for this purpose as well? For the next few days, reports from the president of Sequoia dominated the headlines of every website. Almost everyone was discussing the man who had appeared on stage for less than ten minutes. However, ever since the signing ceremony to that day, no one had seen him again. A lot of reporters even showed up outside of the Sequoia Company headquarters. You could catch a glimpse of the man inside, but nothing ever happened. Even the workers inside refused to speak to them. It was as if he had mysteriously disappeared. Xavier and Ophelia were eating breakfast. Ophelia was busy with her phone, waiting to see if there was any news about Xavier. She didn't have to look far. The news was everywhere. Xavier, you're in the news today, Ophelia said. Xavier put down the newspaper and looked at Ophelia, who was holding a bun in one hand and her phone in the other. You're going to get indigestion if you keep eating like that. Ophelia smiled at Xavier and quickly finished the bun, this time with chewing. Looking at the time, she said, Jeez, oh, break's almost up. Xavier frowned as he saw Ophelia hurriedly drink the milk. Ophelia picked up her bag and prepared to leave. Xavier, I might have to work overtime today. If it's too late, don't wait for me. Have dinner. Xavier followed Ophelia to the door. Then just remember to eat at work. Don't worry, I won't make myself get hungry. With that, Ophelia left. Xavier walked back into the living room. Without Ophelia, the entire house felt empty. It was so quiet, and it was hard to get used to. Liza came into the dining hall. Did you still want to continue eating breakfast? Xavier shook his head. No need. He was planning to work from the home office today, rather than going to the office himself. The house provided privacy, after all. But he hadn't expected Damon to visit. When Xavier saw Damon, he was slightly shocked. He was having coffee in his living room when Damon showed up. He didn't think the first person who would come to find him after his identity was revealed would be him. Damon glared at the young man standing in front of him. Does the young Master Hoffman have anything special for me today? Xavier spoke first. Damon continued to stare daggers at Xavier. He just wanted to see who this person was. Actually, looking carefully, this fake foreigner really did look like his grandfather. Xavier also saw Damon staring at him. Mr. Hoffman, I know I am quite the specimen, but you're barking at the wrong tree. Xavier said, smiling. Damon clenched his fist tightly. Think of a lot of things to say at the time, but he decided to pursue this straightforward course of action. Who the hell are you? Xavier chuckled. How the hell do I answer that question? Who are you? You're not Nick Francis! Damon exclaimed. Xavier held the cup of coffee in front of him and said, I never said I was. Maybe you were just wrong for a while. Damon suddenly asked, it had seemed like Damon had come today to verify his identity. In that case, he more or less suspected everything anyway. Damon saw that Xavier didn't answer, so he thought Xavier's silence was an answer to his question. What is your purpose? Are you trying to sneak back into the Hoffman family? He asked. 
Xavier put down his coffee cup leisurely. I have nothing to do with the Hoffmans. At that moment, it was Damon's turn to frown. Xavier actually said he had nothing to do with the Hoffmans. Could he have heard something wrong? Madeline couldn't have misheard. Believe it or not, added Xavier. Damon felt Xavier was telling him a lie. What was he trying to hide? He finally said, Xavier, I don't care what your goal is. I warn you, do not use Ophelia to achieve them. When Xavier heard this, he suddenly felt annoyed. Damon thinks he was to preach to Xavier. However, he didn't react to Damon's words. Xavier's silence angered Damon even more. Xavier, did you hear me or not? Xavier smirked. Damon, I heard you fine, but this is all between me and Ophelia. It has nothing to do with you. Damon clenched his fist. Don't think that just because you're a CEO of a big company, that you're invulnerable. So, Xavier asked. We'll see. Xavier leaned back on the sofa. He continued. In the meantime, Damon, you should focus your worries on yourself. You should be concerned about your position in the Hoffman family. Damon didn't expect Xavier's words to change so quickly. He snapped. That's my business. Oh, well, then let me be nosy. It seems like you and Ophelia had a close relationship before. But now, that's gone. So I just wanted to give you a reminder, Damon, Xavier said smoothly. Be careful of your family. Hearing Xavier's words, Damon couldn't help but laugh out loud. Who do you think you are to care about me or my family? You are an outsider. It's not up to you to meddle in the matters of my family. Xavier did not get angry. He just wanted to remind Damon what was happening and that whatever he said was for Damon's own good. It was his loss if he didn't appreciate the favor. If his identity was revealed in the future, he would be the one the most impressed. Xavier looked at the time. Well, it is almost time for lunch. Unless you want to stay and eat with me. Damon stood up. I don't need your food. Xavier nodded. Suit yourself. After Damon left, Xavier gave Nick a call to inform him. Are you really going to buy out the Hoffmans? Nick asked earnestly on the phone. Oh, yes. Xavier replied. Once Xavier had given the work for the day, Nick quickly started a discussion with John. They agreed it wouldn't be easy for external forces to take over Hoffman. They needed someone on the inside. Nick, what are your plans for taking down the Hoffmans? Nick shook his head at John's question. I can't say for sure. John glanced at Ophelia sitting outside his office. What do you think Ophelia knows about Miss Hoffman? When Nick heard this, he stared at John. If you're that bold, don't blame me when it backfires. And I am sure that Xavier will be quite happy to hear about what you just said, he said to John sarcastically. John twitched his mouth and held up his hands. All right, fine, I didn't say that. I take it back. Normally, they'd directly ask Ophelia about what was happening in her family. After all, she'd been a part of the Hoffmans. She should be able to understand some of the family's internal workings. However, unfortunately... Xavier didn't want Ophelia to know about his other identity, so Nick and John had to keep everything a secret. It was still surprising that Xavier had revealed to Ophelia that he was Sequoia's CEO, but he still didn't want others to know about the relationship between him and the Hoffmans. So Ophelia was out of bounds for Nick and John. John glared at Nick. Them had a tacit understanding in their hearts. Indeed, Ophelia was a key factor since this was her home turf. Things they could deal with easily from here. Nick, how about we ask Ophelia a little more tactfully? But just casual. Xavier wouldn't possibly get angry at us because of that, right? Nick pondered. I think you're playing with fire here, John. Fine, John lied. I won't approach her. When Nick wasn't around, John went to see Ophelia. He started. Mrs. Woods, I have something to ask of you. Ophelia was flattered when she heard John's words, but she was also a little annoyed at the title John used to address her with. She started, John, you're my supervisor at this company. You can address me by my first name. Please don't call me by my last name. 
John raised his head and looked around to make sure no one was listening to them before he leaned in to whisper in Ophelia's ear. Ophelia, we're going to develop and expand in New York now, right? Don't you think we should be worried about competition? We must have competitors, I'm sure. Yeah? Ophelia nodded. It's plausible. Look, we've also just arrived, so we don't know much about this place. Perhaps you spoke to someone about it? Maybe that way we can prepare for the future. Ophelia nodded at John's words. She's confused. John, what are you implying? Can you just be a bit more specific? I was referring to Miss Hoffman. Ophelia glanced at John. Why do you want to know about her? They seemed dissatisfied with us at the signing ceremony the other day. John explained. Ophelia preferred not to keep in touch with the Hoffmans or even get too close to the family. Even if she did, there was nothing new to explore. Everyone knew what they were like. She didn't know how much she could help John. When John saw Ophelia's expression, he maybe she didn't want to say anything. He was slightly disappointed. It seemed Ophelia didn't trust him. But just as he was about to leave, Ophelia said, I actually don't know much about the Hoffmans, and I'm not sure if what I know will be of any help to you. She looked unhappy about it. John's eyes lit up. Okay. I was just asking. Ophelia continued. Up until now, the Hoffmans still have Elijah Hoffman. He's personally in charge of all sorts of affairs. Most important matters are decided by him alone. Robert's just the director. Most, he occasionally exercises the power of a chairman. He has no actual power in the company. John was listening to everything attentively. Ophelia added, Andrew is the general manager, so he's taken on some senior responsibilities. Most of the decisions are made by him now. But Andrew's a very suspect person. He doesn't trust people, and he isn't very open about his plans, even to his family. John knew Andrew well enough to understand what Ophelia meant. Andrew was complicated and ruthless. He was definitely not easy to deal with. John also remembered that Andrew's mother was not an easy woman to ignore. As for Damon, said Ophelia, he's very smart and has a very active imagination. However, right now he's been overtaken by Andrew, so he's not given much importance in the workings of the family's affairs. John nodded in agreement. So everything Ophelia knew was just the basic stuff that he already knew a lot more about. Perhaps he really needed to send someone to the Hoffmans to fish out the truth. Ophelia, do you know anything else? Ophelia thought about it for a minute, then remembered something. Last time I visited them, I heard Robert and Andrew talking. They were concerned about the property of the family, especially in regards to Grandpa's will. They were all worried Elijah Hoffman might leave his property to an outsider. Hearing this, John's eyes lit up. He knew just where to start now. John patted Ophelia on the shoulder. Thank you, Ophelia. Ophelia smiled. She only said all of this to John because of Xavier. No need to thank me. I, uh, didn't help much anyway. Suddenly, a very cold voice came from behind them. That's enough now. Hearing the voice, John turned his head. When he met Xavier's gaze, he nearly lost his balance and fell to the ground in a panic. His voice trembled a bit. Mr. Woods, uh, I... Xavier glanced at John and then at Ophelia, who stood up. Her face was calm. She was in a very good mood when she saw Xavier. Xavier, what are you doing here? I came up to take a look at things. Xavier's voice was cold. Ophelia finally noticed his displeasure. Is something wrong? John decided that the time was a long past for a graceful exit. Xavier probably might not say anything in front of Ophelia, but it was a huge risk to stay there. Xavier was known to hold grudges. So John straightened himself invented the couple and disappeared into his office. Xavier watched him leave in silence. He would deal with John later. Ophelia stepped forward and asked, Xavier, what's wrong? Xavier reached out to wrap his arm around Ophelia's waist and pulled her into his embrace. Ophelia looked shyly at Xavier. Her voice was soft. Xavier, what are you doing? Let me go. Xavier raised his eyebrows. He lowered his head and whispered into Ophelia's ear, You don't need me to remind you that you're married, do you? Stay away from other men. It's not right for you to be so forward with John in public. Ophelia stiffened. She hadn't given it much thought. 
They had just shaken hands, and John had patted her on the arm. That's all. But then she remembered that she and John were perhaps sitting too close to each other and talking in hushed tones. Anyone would think there was something going on between them. Oh, did it look that bad? She asked Xavier. Yes, Xavier exclaimed. Ophelia burst out laughing. She said softly again, Hey, Xavier, are you jealous? Xavier didn't say a thing suddenly swooped down and kissed her full on the mouth. The whole office was in an uproar. Boss was kissing Ophelia in front of everyone? Ophelia was stunned. Suddenly, there was applause and whistles. She tried to push Xavier away, embarrassed, but he held on to her tightly and wouldn't let go. John watched the scene unfold from Nick's office. Once again, he was reminded of how formidable Xavier was in his methods. Meanwhile, Nick looked at the scene happening outside with his arms crossed. Xavier was definitely trying to make a point right now. John, just think about how you're going to explain everything to Xavier right now. And don't believe for a second he's going to go easy on you, said Nick. Xavier finally let go of Ophelia. He looked deep into her eyes and said fiercely, You are my woman. Ophelia pressed her head against Xavier's chest. She was too shy to look around at the others. She whispered, I know that. There's nothing between me and Johnny. Just give me some questions. Xavier also reached out and pressed Ophelia back into his arms. Very well. I don't think of John like that at all, Ophelia continued. John is someone who's sometimes less serious, maybe even a little motherly to me. But when he's working, he's always a professional. Hearing Ophelia's words, Xavier rested easy. Even so, you need to keep an eye on these things. Others might think differently. Oh. Ophelia nodded. You're right. I'll pay attention to it in the future. Xavier touched Ophelia's soft hair and smelled the fragrance it exuded. Is your work finished yet? Not yet. Then hurry up. I'll wait. Ophelia raised her head and smiled brightly at Xavier. All right. Xavier let go of Ophelia and headed straight for next office. Nick saw him coming and whispered to John, Prepare yourself. John clasped his hands together and said to himself, God help me. Xavier came in and sat down on the sofa behind John and looked at him. He remembered what Ophelia had said and calmed down. But he still wanted to teach John a small lesson. He waited for a while before speaking. He really wanted John to sweat properly before he said anything. Nick, too, stood to the side, tensed up. John was sweating all over the place, but too shaken to do anything about it. Once or twice, Xavier pretended to open his mouth and think of something to say, but he kept shaking his head and ignoring John. Finally, John, who couldn't take the pressure anymore, decided to bite the bullet and take a chance. Boss, you was wrong, he exclaimed a bit loudly. Fortunately, they were in Nick's office, and it was reasonably soundproof. Still, Xavier was taken aback by his confession. He raised an eyebrow at John, but said nothing. After a few seconds, when the tension in the room was nearly audible, he turned to Nick, who blanched. Ignoring Nick's reaction, Xavier asked, Nick, how do you think we should punish him? John blinked, suddenly aware that something was wrong. Why is he asking Nick for help? Nick was surprised too, but didn't show it. He knew Xavier liked to play games. He carefully thought about it. I'll, um, let the boss deal with this one. Xavier smirked and nodded. Turning to John, he said, I'm cutting your salary in half for this month, and the next one. Both John and Nick were surprised. Salary cut? That's it? Huh? John looked incredulous. Xavier raised his eyebrows and looked at John. Any objections? No, no, no no objections. John nodded vigorously. Nick was suddenly curious about what Ophelia had said to Xavier. It was a miracle she had said the right words, so he wasn't severely punishing John. It seemed like Ophelia was slowly changing Xavier. Hopefully this was good. Meanwhile, Xavier's mind drifted once again. On the way to the office, he had seen all kinds of promotions and slogans posted at shopping malls. Something about Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is, Xavier suddenly said. Nick were shocked. What did he expect them to say? They looked at each other and were speechless. Xavier turned around and looked at them. Do you not know? The two of them nodded. 
They did, but somehow they felt a little awkward bringing up a topic that might involve Xavier and Ophelia. Especially after what just happened with John and Ophelia. I think we should, uh, ask the young ladies outside, Nick finally suggested. Fine, give me Jane Stewart, Xavier instructed. I hope you enjoyed the episodes. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episodes. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.